welcome to the Horror Hangout, a podcast where two bearded film fans watch the best and worst horror movies ever and talk about them. My name is Ben Errington, and I'm joined by Andy Conduit Turner. Hello, Ben. Andy Conduit Turner. How you doing, man? I'm good, thank you. There's a little bit of a lie in the beginning there, Ben, because there are still. I know. I don't know why I said two. There are still three bearded film fans. Having a bit. Having a beard isn't necessarily something you need to have to be on this podcast, but it helps. A couple uh, of people have not had them that have been on, mostly our female guests. Um, yeah, and I think my my beard's definitely in a state of disrepair at the moment. It's a bit short, a bit, bit patchy, but uh, luckily our guest today is bringing the beard level right up, all the way to the top, probably the highest it's ever been. No Gandalf the Great, no. It's- <laughs> Gandalf the Great, oh, it's Gandalf the, Gandalf the White is here. No, he's not. Um, so we're joined by a very special guest today. Uh, he's a horror fan from Lincoln in the UK. He's a YouTuber under the moniker Needle Rats, who reacts to horror movies and a longtime supporter of the podcast and monkey horror enthusiast, <laughs> who even yeah. sent us Dunstan checks in t-shirts after a particular episode. Which episode was it? Congo? I think it was Congo. I think, but I think it was the Congo one, yeah. yeah, yeah. I think he's Dunstan even... came up on that episode, right? <laughs> he's even wearing uh, a Congo t-shirt today, so welcome to the show, Ben Scaife. Hi. Thanks for Hello. having me. <laughs> welcome. Welcome. First, thank you so much for being such an avid uh, supporter of the show. Absolutely lovely. Really, oh, really, no really it's, appreciate it's, it. It's a good show. Like I said, I've been listening for a, a good couple of years and it's just got better, I think. So thank it's, you, it's, thank, it's thank you so much. How did you discover the show? That's that was my first question. Oh, I, where I used to do a network sales job, which is a lot of driving. Um, and it's, it's just boring listening to Radio One all the time. And then the audio you get, Radio Two, and then that gets boring. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. So you completely uh, so, and thought, what else can I do? That's it. And I've always liked horror films. So I started listening to audiobooks. And then I think I listened to it on audiobook. And that took about nine months of my life away. <laughs> but then I just, I just started like, yeah, I just, just like searched to see if there's any kind of like podcasts. And you guys came up. Um, and That's you sweet. said you got beards as well. And I thought, I've got a beard. I've got a minute. Comments. I can remember go. those guys. We could be best buddies. And here we are. We've all so. got beards. <laughs> And then all of this time later, you're a guest on the show. Crazy oh, how life works out, isn't it? Long overdue, I together. think, as well, because I know Ben here was an early supporter when we used to debate, and when one of the people that will remain nameless didn't agree that, that, that Congo was a horror <laughs> film, Ben was on there. He was on the socials backing up that claim that Congo, in many ways, is a, a, a very horrific film. And um, what does it what does it actually even say on your t-shirt? It says Congo, the 1995 action adventure film. And then it says <laughs> also a terror film, I think. Some of that. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh yeah, so this t- today's episode, we thought what better film to cover than a film that would round off the unofficial monkey horror trilogy. I say unofficial, but I think we could make it official if we really pushed it. Yeah, this is our official monkey trilogy. So I'm sure we'll put the episode links in the in the show notes. But we began with, of course, Monkey Shines. It would have been a couple of years ago now, and then just about what a year and a week it's ago, like exactly a week ago. Almost, yeah, I think almost it came almost up on a memories. year. Yeah, it was came up on memories a year ago. We did um, Congo, and now today's episode. If you're listening to this, you'll have seen the name of the title, so I don't to keep it a secret watching a film called Link today. <laughs> I've just got the episodes running, you know, every time. Oh, I'm sorry, to be a spoilers, surprise. spoilers. Sorry, guys. Yeah. We, so, we also got Link today. In terms of monkey horror, like I was looking into, I think we've mentioned Shakma before. Um, what else? Outbreak. <laughs> I was thinking this the other day. Outbreak, there's a monkey in it. There's yeah. a disease that kills a load of people. Kind of, is the monkey kind of horrific. The, is the monkey the the horror thing there is he just a victim just i the can't first remember thing. uh i don't know something dodgy about him something dodgy i reckon he was behind the old thing 
Little Ricky's bastard. one of these that got infected on purpose. Topical. <laughs> Topical, exactly. <laughs> Possibly. Uh, and then obviously J- Dunstan checks. <laughs> Dunstan checks in, which is a feel. I can't even remember the context in which we brought up Dunstan checks in. But in a way, there's a lot of peril in that film. There is. I mean, they say mild peril on the back, but I would say moderate at least. Yeah, definitely moderate. Um, and that Dunstan, against his will, is a criminal. <laughs> against his will. Yeah, the bad circus man yeah. is um, <laughs> making him rob diamonds and stuff. Oh yeah, that's it. I, I need. I definitely. On the day the hotel inspector is coming to give the the dad that lives in the hotel with his kids the elusive six star for the hotel. That's right. Have you seen the state of the poster of Dunstan posing in his little speedos? Well, not speedos, they're like shorts. You've got a, why are they sexualizing a different version of the poster? To <laughs> why are, you, why are they sexualizing an, an ape? <laughs> Very strange. I would say sexualizing an ape. There's an ape sexualizing someone in this movie. There's a couple um, of them. There's, there's several people sexualizing other people in this movie. Yeah, it's a bit, yeah, it's definitely a bit against the grain, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, but surely if, if Dunstan's a, a horror film because he's <laughs> like a bad guy <laughs> uh, stealing diamonds, then that means that Short Circuit 2 would be a robot terror film because yeah. I wouldn't he's argue off. It. I wouldn't argue against it. What I'm going to say is that... This is an arm. <laughs> <laughs> I think most mon- films of monkeys in are pretty scary, in a way. A lot of people are scared of monkeys, but... You read a lot of horror, horror stories about monkeys. Do you remember that woman who got her face ripped off by a chimpanzee? There's at least one, maybe more stories about people getting their face ripped off by a chimpanzee. Off. Yeah. <laughs> and why are they so strong? Like when he was, when Link, in, uh, jumping forward to the film, but when he was lifting up a van, like, I don't know, Andre the Giant, is that possible? <laughs> is that possible? I don't think that is. They uh, are really is strong. And awe. They are really strong. <laughs> Although, again, getting into the movie, maybe an orangutan is strong enough because in this film, probably the height of ape acting, all of the... I read this on on the the official write-up. All of the characters, all of the ape characters in this are all meant to be chimpanzees. Link is just played by an orangutan. Yeah, Mm. I know. Um, so how did, how couldn't get enough with... chimps, I guess. So they just was it, they died in a orangutan black. The orangutan was just so good in the audition. Must have been such a good actor. Yeah, so, you really. He's the only one that smoked. That's what he was. <laughs> yeah. Everyone else went. <laughs> <laughs> and he went. And he no, like, oh, no, 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 no. He's like, give it here, mate. Give it here. We need an ape that can smoke, that can ogle naked women. Oh, I said half naked women then, but she is completely naked. Ogle half naked women, and also he's only really got. He does that scream. The, the the ape scream but he's only really got one look which is like <laughs> eyebrows raised <laughs> side eye side eye yeah <laughs> when he does that <laughs> oh my god i couldn't yeah. stop laughing every time it cut to him it's supposed to be like a moment that was i don't know a bit tense or maybe like oh, what's he gonna do oh yeah, it's he's just, just him power- giving the he's a powerful ape though he side eye. thumps a dog hard enough to change its breed <laughs> <Later> <laughs> He yeah. does, yeah. Yeah, a Rottweiler was chasing that. Elizabeth Shew up a fence, then he thumps it so hard it becomes a dead Doberman. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> wow. Well, he literally, it... he thumped it so hard, his genetics were shifted. I mean, <laughs> not any, no, no one has punched him that hard fun. since Superboy punched reality so hard it brought Jason Todd back to life. Those are the two most powerful oh, no. punches. But his, seen... his strength is a little bit inconsistent, though, because sometimes he just gets pushed over. Yeah, he's ass. sucker punched yeah, later on it. as well. Oh, I guess he didn't see it coming. Um, yeah, yeah, I suppose so. Yeah, are apes the scariest animal that you might encounter? It's quite, like you say, Ben, a lot of people are afraid of apes. I feel like in my day-to-day life, I can avoid apes. <laughs> For the most part. I Wasps, think, though, I think they can the get thing... you any time. <laughs> Wasps can get you any time. Bees. Um, I think with apes, is the fact that We've been so we don't you know we're starting to think of them as much of a threat because we've grown up seeing, you know, other animals, other jungle-based animals, being much more of a threat. Lions, tigers, bears. Oh my! Uh, we got a tiger apes, next. Oh shit! We got a tiger next week. We'll come. To yeah, that. but apes are always apes are always like I don't know sidekicks or like the or cheeky chappies or you know we don't realize how strong and terrifying they actually are. Well, there's a whole planet of them, isn't there? Yeah, 
<laughs> and you think about the planet of the apes. There's a whole bloody planet of them. They, would... Especially in that first one, you'd think that the astronaut would wonder, have they all got osses? It must be a planet of the horses before the apes came. <laughs> exactly, yeah. And, there's a, and the apes have a horror film where horses are in charge and they ride around on apes' backs. What happened before that? Whatever came before horses. Whatever came before that chicken and the egg scenario we've got. Um, but also, like, that, not all apes are like that, obviously. Let's talk about Harambe. I mean, yeah. he, did, he did nothing wrong. Justice for Harambe, he's dead. Can't assassinated. Um, assassinated. <laughs> assassinated. Um, so, you know, not all apes, but I think of all the horror, horror stories about apes, it's always a bit more surprising because I guess you don't expect it as much. And it's because they're clever as well, I guess. Most things, like if a rhino or a shark was after you or a cobra, they can't open a door. A cobra might Only be. apes and velociraptors, basically. <laughs> it's the similarity to humans, isn't it? That's, that's what it is. It's yeah. the uncanny... Yeah uncanny valley nature of it i guess is that there's something in those eyes that looks incredibly close to being human and in that way we're like there's a little bit of a connection you're like have you got empathy you're not gonna hurt me are you? you're a lovely ape and then suddenly face is ripped off yeah got your nose really <laughs> got your nose and everything else <laughs> got your nose any balls off had your ears oh yeah and rips off ball. oh. they do rip off balls don't they yeah that's their favorite that's like their first move <laughs> their favorite thing johnny cage is their main that's what they do they go oh, straight for the ball can you smash. imagine can you imagine getting attacked by an ape and thinking, oh, I've got away, and then suddenly... You've got to, <laughs> apparently, if an ape tries to get you, a serious, like, safety warning here, you've got to try and, like, lie down in a way, um, except in the art, like, you've got to try and ball your fists up so they can't try and, like, you know, get in your fingers and stuff, but you've got to try and, like, brace <laughs> yourself and lie down so they can't flip you over and try and uh, get your balls. I mean, the best thing to do would to be not got by an ape, I guess, but... Where did you get this information? I don't know, just <laughs> experience or something like that. It's just happened. Yeah, I've got, flip I've you got, over. I've, so what I've have you got, done? You've got a dossier sucked. on how to fight every single animal. <laughs> well, like Batman's got a dossier on every member. Yeah, of have a dossier. I mean, just put it, just put it out there, Ben. Ben's. Um, if you were told you had to fight an ape, but you can choose um, the venue where you're going to fight one, what would you pick? The venue. You can, choose, you can choose you can choose the scenario space, space is good space i choose good water one. i don't think lots of apes yeah. can swim water's a good one yeah i think they're that, weak that local water. pool you get to choose how much water you have though because it could just be like a, a puddle. Like glass yeah you could choose so, like, a glass you could, you could choose like yeah in a pool of water you get fucked up i reckon just in a pub <laughs> <laughs> in a pub and you've got like a snooker queue snooker queue snooker balls in a sock uh Smash a bloody stool over his head. Not a shit. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, space uh, is a good one though, Ben. Because yeah, it's a great one. I mean, I feel like I have a high percentage of dying in space as well. Space is dangerous. Mm. But... I don't want to hear you scream. Yeah, but you got more of a, more of an awareness of it, haven't you? So you could just give them a little push, and then you're like, yeah, they wouldn't have a clue. Away. They'd be like, why am I floating? Be up. They lose fact. their minds. Yeah, you crash on a planet. Build up his own civilization, and there we go. There we go. Okay. Well, we we do have apart, some horror horror apart news. From apes, yeah. What's that's in the news? Then? A, that's a part of the show <laughs> which I was kind of forgetting about. Uh, but we'll do we'll do this quickly. It was only a few bits, a few bits and bobs. Uh, of course, first of all, we'll talk about Meatloaf, who passed away this uh, this week, only like three or four days ago. So rest in peace, Meatloaf. We covered a movie he was in, Rocky Horror Picture Show, just before Christmas. Um, he passed away age seventy four. Four, obviously famous for his music career, but he starred in loads of films as well, including Fight Club. Um, I think he was in like Wayne's World. He, he was in a Tales from the Crypt episode, uh, I believe. And obviously his albums, Bat of Hell, Bat of Hell Part Two and Three. I've got like horror themes in a way. These kind of like hell, hell, exactly. Hell's bloody horrific. But There's the a album that's going around raising it all the time in horror films. Album covers are absolutely stupendous so i think we are going to cover a movie he's in next week um kind of planning ahead for what episodes we're going to do in february and andy was keen to mention that burning bright also known as tiger in a house movie during a hurricane stars meatloaf as like a police officer possibly he Sheriff? is a he's a tiger, tiger owner. owner oh he's um, a tiger owner he's a tiger king in fact, before he's the Tiger, Tiger King, King. He's there was the original Meatloaf. Tiger King. Yeah, and um, yeah, we'll come to that next week. But so I guess there's only one thing that's worse than being trapped in your house with 
uh, when there's a bad old hurricane going down. Hurricane, very dangerous. You don't want to be out there. You want to stay in the house. But do you want to stay in the house? When there's a tiger in there. Oh, bloody hell. I can't think of anything yeah. worse. Can't think of anything worse. How about if well, you have, relax. What if you've got to look after your little brother at the same time, Ben? You just relax, got worse. Could you? Just, oh, <laughs> let's chill out. Oh, there's a tiger in here. Jesus. Can't. Well, we'll come to that next week. But so yeah. I guess we'll talk about uh, meatloaf a bit more next yeah. week. Uh, also on the news is that the Fright Fest Glasgow 2022 lineup has been announced. So this is taking place um, from Thursday, the 10th of March to Saturday, the 12th of March. Tickets are available now, I think we're going to be covering some of these films in some... I'm not entirely sure how much of them we will be covering, but we're trying to work that out uh, behind the scenes at the moment. Uh, but the movies that have been released are a movie called Monstrous. Um, sorry, the lineup's been released. A movie called Monstrous starring Christina Ricci. Um, what else have we got? Let the Wrong One In, which uh, sounds, sounds very interesting. Um, also, You Are Not My Mother... The Cellar, A Cloud So High. So all of these movies, I guess, will what if we get a chance to see any of them, we'll be discussing them in March around about the time of the festival. The Fright Fest guys always do um, a really nice eclectic lineup of, of things. So, you know, there'll be things that lean into comedy. There'll be some international film. There'll be some some big names, you know, like you say, there's a Christina Ricci project coming out. There will be some smaller names and some really cool independent stuff so looking forward to seeing what's what's on the slate really um i'm going to take in as much of it as i can regardless of what we may or may not do remotely because i'm in the lucky position of living just down the road i may try and go to a couple myself we'll see yeah very exciting looking forward to that uh so yeah we will be bringing some more information of that whether it's in bonus episode form or just in our usual episode um line up as well so we'll just just follow our social channels and we will announce what our involvement will be over the next coming weeks regardless of what um, we do i might see what we can find about the different creators as well maybe see i know we've done a couple of bonuses where we've chatted to a few um yeah that would be directors good. writers people are in these movies maybe we'll see while they're on the festival circuit and he wants a quick chat talk about their process creating those movies you don't have to have fun. a beard no beards are not don't need to i mean they are optional sorry to break it to you ben they are optional you know and you've grown it especially yeah queen shaver this morning (laughs) ridiculous that is impressive uh (laughs) following on from last week's episode scream have you seen scream uh no i've not so no spoilers for that i've not even been able to listen to the episode because it is spoiler heavy the episode so we won't spoil it behave yourself andy um Neve Campbell has come out and said, I mean, you would just be it's obvious you're going to get this, and it? it's like, oh, we'll see if I'm going to be in the next one. If the script's good enough, I'd like to. But what I wanted to discuss here is what will the next Scream movie be called, in your opinion? Scream 2? Because Scream this one was called just right. Scream again, wasn't it? It was just yeah. called Scream, yeah. So there's no five, although it doesn't like veto any of the previous movies, like one to four still exists. So now what? Scream. They call it Scream Two or Scream colon name something. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, as it's like super meta, like maybe they'll do two because obviously it's in keeping with horror tropes currently. I guess. Scream Two in brackets six. Scream kills. Two. Evil dies tonight. What is your call? Michael Myers is in this one. Scream Two plus six eight. I don't know. I'm confusing myself now. Um, so yeah, Sydney said that. Um, sorry, Neve. Her name's not Sydney. Sydney. Sydney Prescott isn't real. She is to me. It's very meta, Ben. You've you've very, really very played meta. into the hands again. Um, and the the only other thing I've got here, unless you're going to say something, then, Andy. Sorry, don't want to get. No, no, no. Thank you, guys. Is that the Meg sequel begins filming in the UK this month with director Ben Wheatley, which is kind of crazy when you think about it. But I think he's been attached to quite a few big studio uh, sequels recently so i think he wants to get his name out there as a as a director to be reckoned with rather than this guy who brings smaller budget horror thrillers to the screen he wants some of that big big studio money he wants some of that big studio money and uh, maybe maybe just wants to rub shoulders with jason statham do you reckon he when he pitched it he went and wrote meg on a on a whiteboard and then he wrote (laughs) s and then turned the s into a dollar oh yeah of course (laughs) 
the Megs filming in the United Kingdom as well. What are we talking? A Meg off the coast of Cornwall? What's that just, there? Jason's, just Jason's day then. If, if there's COVID, <laughs> he hasn't been able to travel, so he has to stay at home where he lives. Are they going to try and pass it off as being like somewhere else? More glamorous. They're in Skegness. Just don't color contrast up so the sea looks bluer. You'll be all right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Wow. Anyway, looking forward to that. The, the Meg is is fun. Have you seen yeah, the Meg, fun. Ben? Yeah, I've seen the Meg. Yeah, it's. I mean, <laughs> it is what it is, isn't it? It's everything that's in the trailers and extra bits. Exactly. Yeah. The shark. I mean, it's no <laughs> deep blue sea, obviously, but no, it's not. No, no, that, oh, Samuel L. Jackson's in uh, Yorkshire at the minute, isn't he? What? Is it, is heard, in Yorkshire yeah. filming a Marvel film. So if Jason Statham could get down there, they could like oh, cross over. Know, just exactly do a big crossover. Do a big. We want a shocking moment where Samuel Jackson gets eaten out of nowhere in whatever film he's in. Please, Marvel <laughs> film. What's that? Is that like Secret Invasion or something? Maybe. I, I don't know. I don't know what it is. I just heard it on the news uh, today. Because um, we're, we're off to York later on this week, so I'm gonna chase him down. Let's see if you can see yeah. him. Chase yeah, why not? Him down, get a photo. <laughs> Oh, ah, Samuel you're a scroll. And he'd be like, uh, I can't <laughs> throw, <you." laughs> throw, some, throw some rubber snakes at him, see how he reacts. You get furious. <laughs> you get sick of them. Yeah. <laughs> He's oh, sick I'm of them. <laughs> sick of the snakes in York. Uh, so, so that's pretty much it for uh, horror news. What I've got, I guess, has anybody seen anything this week that they wanted to discuss? I've not I've seen all that thing much. I will share with you, Ben, but I think for the first one, for, for your interests, let alone let alone anyone else is listening, but I did see something that I think might be of your might be of your interest today. There is a game development company called Alpha Beta, uh, and they are currently um, advertising an open beta that's coming up for their horror focused physics game that's coming out. It's called Hidden Deep. You can sign up for it on on Steam mm-hmm. right now. It's about to go into early access. It's a they their description of a physics-based spelunking survival horror adventure inspired by Aliens, Half-Life, and The Thing. Oh. And it looks great. It oh, looks man. incredible. It looks like a lot of fun. It looks incredibly gory. It Hidden has... Deep, did you say? Yes. Hidden Is it like deep. a platformer? Um, like a 2D... It's got like mm. a very different aesthetic, but think of the build on like, um, on like Limbo or something okay. like that. It also really car- like carry on. on. Yeah, carry on. yeah, it has like a carry on vibe to it. I never played that. Oh, it's great. I really should play that. Um, yeah, uh, but yeah, you can sign up for beta testing of that now and not being sponsored by them, but I am going to try and do it. So uh, it looks great. Yeah. Let's go off. Have a look at that. Is that other, um, I think it's Madison or something like that, a game that's coming out, which is a, a first-person horror, like Fatal Frame, if you ever played Fatal Frame. Oh, yeah. That's oh, supposed yeah. to be coming out on um, consoles and PC. Oh, yeah, I see. Like, okay. soon. It looks really good, that. Yeah, there's, like, a camera involved. Is it so similar sort of... Um, yeah, style. similar sort of stuff to like Fatal P- looks Frame. Like P- so it looks like PT a bit in some of these... Yeah. Some of these... Um, oh, it still scares me, that game. Oh my God, yeah. have, you, have you still got it on your console? I've still got it, yeah. I've got it on a hard yeah, yeah. drive. And the <laughs> Me PS4. too, yeah. I can't get rid of it. Put your, put <laughs> your kids through college with that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Uh, yeah, I know what you mean. I'm, I'm always keen to check out new survival horror games. I think there's a lot a lot of them out there which are a bit sort of like cookie cutter. And it's, it, yeah. it can be a bit difficult trying to find one that really does stick. Um, but I'm always willing to, to try new new ones out. Yeah, that sounds great. How about what have we what have we watched then? Um, ben, do you want to go first? Do you watch anything that doesn't help? Um, guest Ben. <laughs> oh yeah, um, guest Ben. Do you do you want to go first? What have you you watched anything exciting this week? I, not really, not this week. No, um, I watched this film again, which we're going to do today because you know I've not seen it enough, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I introduced my daughter to Die Hard. Oh, so so that's it. But she's. She's at that age where I think, because she's nine, so she she can watch it. She's at that age where it's it's good to get her into those those sort of things. I, I was introduced to like horror films when I was about five, something like that. I used my my older brother. He used to make me watch Zombie Flesh Eaters oh, on oh, Beta Max. Yeah. Is that the first one you saw? Was it? it one of the, yeah, that in uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Oh my god! But, and that that's not really gory film <laughs> for that kid, but yeah. 
zombie oh, flesh eaters. Still, still, I remember seeing Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Like, I guess I was probably like fifteen, and I was seriously, seriously scared by it. Um, kind it's, of disturbing, isn't it? Like, just the imagery in that, but just the imagery, just like the the. the it stinks. Do you know what I mean? Just looking yeah, at you, like, it's, oh, it's, it's it does, yeah. movie, isn't it? it? Absolutely stinks. Just that that metal door going across is probably like one of the most terrifying moments of that film for me. Yeah, when when you uh, first see that. But yeah, I've certainly been introducing it to to horror films. But then afterwards, we'll talk about how they make it and who played what. Well, we did Predator uh, just before Christmas, and we've done uh, Alien and Aliens. This and sounds she like just, a- she just loves them. This sounds like it could be a podcast, Ben. Not gonna lie. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Horror <laughs> movies with your daughter and explaining the. I probably got put away. I think. <laughs> no, I did hear. I've I've heard of that used as a as a thing as well. I I forget who it was. I think it was someone on on Twitter. So apologies, I can't recall their name. But that was a technique that their parents used because they wanted them to not be afraid of things. So they would watch horror movies with them, but actually they would, as they were going through, quite often. To stop the kid having like nightmares or to really dwell on it or get upset, they would like the example they gave was Predator. They were watching it and they would go through and they would pause and say, This is how they've done this. Like, this is how they have filmed this scene. So you could do that. So it kept it in the 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 kid's mind watching this movie that they'd been excited to watch with their family that, oh, this is a, you know, it is a story and it's a piece of entertainment and this was made by people. It isn't yeah. like a I remember seeing, come and get you. I remember seeing like behind the scenes of The Thing with all the practical effects. I think it made it worse for me. <laughs> I was just like, oh, Jesus Christ, it looks even worse now. I hate it. But yeah. I think a lot of those sort of films do though. Any, any like of the late 80s stuff like The Thing and The Fly, they yeah. still look horrible now because they, they're not like shiny, shivery CGI. Mm. I think if yeah. it's practical effects, it just looks so much better. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I agree. Um, Nothing dates like, apart from Jurassic Park, which I know is partially practical, like a lot of effects and CG that is the fastest way to date a movie other than haircuts and sunglasses, which is which holds up far less well than the CGI <laughs> in the old Matrix movies. You're like, oh. I mean, your CG doesn't look too bad, but those sunglasses in like the future. You know, it's really. <clears throat> I saw a clip of like the Matrix. What was the third one called? Revolutions. Revolutions. No, yeah. Revolutions. And apparently, everyone, all the Mister Smiths were actors with like rubber masks on. It wasn't all just like copy and paste CGI, which I always thought it looked like. Imagine going to all that effort and it still <laughs> looks like copy and paste CGI. <laughs> you just feel like. Fuck, I've made 900 masks of Hugo Weaving and Jesus. Years to come, that'll be a new Michael Myers thing. There'll be a variant of Michael Myers as a Hugo Weaving mask. <laughs> yeah, that would be pretty terrifying, I think. Yeah. Uh, anything else at all, Ben? Have you seen anything else this week? Played anything worth mentioning this week? No, oh, I've been playing um, Returnal. Have oh, you guys wow. heard okay. of that or oh, played I, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I've, like with many games, uh, Got it. Got a time to play it. <laughs> it's. I, I think it's the sort of game where you only need ten minutes to give it a go, and then the next time you go through it, you need twenty minutes, and then thirty minutes. It. It took okay. me, uh, like a day, to get to like, the second boss, and I. And that was like just at Christmas, and then it was only yesterday when I got past the third boss, oh, and it's wow. just. It, it's a slow because as soon as you die, everything just gets reset. Straight, straight back at the beginning again with nothing but oh, wow. your reflexes get better and you've got and it's like do i go through all of the first level to level up and then go through the le- second level to level up a bit and then go fight the boss or do i just go straight to the level three boss oh so you can and, just go straight uh, to the uh, yeah, point yeah, yeah once you do one level you've got access to the second one but and oh, every time okay. you die you're slowly figuring out the story of what's going on to this woman it's really good really oh, good game. i've heard it, i've heard it's really good is there anything that you get by when you die that you keep or is it a total reset because i know with things like what, dead cells and hades and stuff you can you can kind of trickle some updates that you can get when you restart has everything gone when you come back you, you do get some things like you you'll learn how to do a dash and then after the first you, you get like a grappling hook to get you to high ledges so and then i can't think of what else you get extra slots that you can open so you can okay. carry more things and every time you get a weapon the more you use it you unlock a percentage of the secondary functions and everything else and so that always better. stays unlocked all okay. the time yeah 
I will have to have a go because I do like it. that type of game. I say that having not successfully completed anything that follows that pattern. <laughs> but I do like it. It's a good sense of achievement when you do it. But it. just, just a 20-minute jaunt on it and you'll be like, oh, I'll need to do that again. Oh, cool. I will give it a go. Okay. I wanted to check out. I, I finished the Guardians of the Galaxy game this week. Um, I was finding it, I think I mentioned last week, I was finding it a bit linear and a bit like hand-holdy. But I think maybe I was only about halfway through. I mean, I've played it a lot this week. Uh, maybe about halfway through. And now I finished it, I feel a little bit, like, a lot better than I really anticipated. It would appear that Garrett's Dogs are back. I don't know that dogs are back. I don't know that she's back yet. I haven't heard her come through the door. But they know. They They're know. good, they, aren't they? They can sense it. Yeah, they did it earlier on. Like they had some deliveries come. And I hadn't heard, you know, bear in mind the guy was in a van or anything like that. I hadn't heard a van pull up. I hadn't heard anything. But they were kicking off good and proper. Or maybe she's not back and they're just being mental. Who knows? Ricky's Who even him. knows? Ricky's sucking himself back in. Sharon has been smart and has gone up the back way so they've not seen her come through the door so they're just confused oh, okay. we, we sometimes get Edgar just like attacks the letterbox like <laughs> on the night time when there's nobody about he's like there's no postman what are you playing at it's just like I'm having it and <laughs> <laughs> I'm having it apparently not well hopefully the, the, the peeps that you get from the dogs kicking off will give you a Thing. yeah sorry I was, all i gotta do is remember that it happens like sometimes i go away from it from like a day and then i come back to it and i'm like oh, yeah it's fine oh, yeah this i think i have looked didn't i do that once like uploaded something where it was just had yeah, a, like a, a massive slight, toilet break in the middle massive toilet break in the middle yeah i've definitely yeah. done that before okay right. 10 what, minutes what of what um have you seen anything else but you were talking about um you just finished guardians of the galaxy oh yeah it's a bit hand so just finished Guardians of the Galaxy and yeah the first half I didn't really get on with it I thought it was quite linear it was a bit like you could there wasn't much exploration and it is a bit like that I guess but by the time the second half opens up a bit and there's a lot more combat the combat's really good because you only control Star Lord and you're kind of like telling it all your other teammates what to do and uh, yeah loads of interesting characters characters that haven't been in the films so characters that probably will be included in future films as well I think um, so yeah, just like an interesting take, lots of interesting work. It reminded me a bit of um, Star Wars Fallen Order, Jedi Fallen okay. Order, a bit like that, where you kind of like go to a few different planets and all the flora and fauna is kind of all different in, in the planets and stuff. But yeah, I'll probably Rarity, recommend it. I've actually finished that one, the Star Wars one. <laughs> so oh, you uh, have? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I think in terms of Marvel games, obviously... I did like the the Avengers game, and obviously the Spider Man games are so great. So you play, so your PlayStation rep, then you really liked Avengers a lot. No, I couldn't believe that. Oh, I played that the most last year, Avengers. But this is more of a story based game, I'd say. There's a lot of story. There's a lot of a lot of choices you make impact the rest of the game as well. So that's quite that's, interesting. that's what I want. I want I've come to a point in my life where I, I want something to be structured and have a story and i want i want like mass effect is a huge time sink there's so much other stuff you can do but nothing feels grindy out of those to a degree even the assassin's creed games like everything has even the stuff that might feel like busy work has got like there's a story thing that you can get to it which isn't just repeating the same thing over again the bet the advice i've taken from someone about avengers is hey especially if you're on a lower difficulty, you don't have to repeat everything or do anything that's optional, the training missions, just knuckle down and do the story, which is quite yeah. good. So if I can blitz that within a 12 hours, then I will. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'd say Guardians of the Galaxy is like Mass Effect Light, where you can't do any side quests or anything like that, that you're, you're only on the, on the sort of main story narrative for the, whole, for the duration of the film. So, that's all right, but you're just game, doing it. Game, sorry. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and apart from that, I watched the first couple of episodes of The Book of Boba Fett. If you guys have seen any of that yet? Not yet. I'm still no, the not series yet. behind on Mandalorian. I'll get to it one day. I'll get to it. Uh... I've done all the Mandalorian. I just haven't had a chance to start that. I've only just watched Hawkeye, so I'm slowly catching up with everything. Oh, I've not I've not finished Hawkeye. I need, to go and, I need to go and finish that. Boba Fett seems good. Um, interesting. It seems to include some characters that I'm pretty sure like are part of star wars lore but maybe like books or some some other things like access characters i've heard of but not from the movies 
Um, but it's good. It sits in this nice little pocket, like after Return of the Jedi. So it's interesting to see sort of the things they include from that. Um, not as like, I don't know. It's, it's a weird one. I think if you enjoyed The Mandalorian, because it's, it's kind of like family friendly, episodic, obviously, with like different planets and creatures and stuff. This one feels a bit more like it's got more of a story um, based on him. They keep saying crime boss, but I'm a bit like, I don't know. I don't know if I buy it. It's just weird seeing a character like Boba Fett suddenly becoming like a main character and also a good guy, essentially, because in the films, he's just... Yeah, is it... I'm not sure if you make it because... It's hard to articulate this. Bear with me. He's not done anything it, majorly heroic it, so far. Is it a no. Disney thing that you can't have a centralised character that is entirely a bad guy and you know Bo- Boba Fett has become popular so he uh, is kind of recast <clears throat> in a heroic light in much the same way uh, and I'll lay off Disney on this one DC does it I would say egregiously with their with their comic villains like someone someone is popular so finds themselves recast in a more heroic light um yeah. i found i found it mostly with female villains because they haven't got as many as many really notable female heroes so they've taken some really standout villainous characters and they recast them in more heroic lights or anti-heroic lights hmm. to you know look at the transition of like harley quinn look at things like poison ivy catwoman a lot of the Batman Cruella stuff. and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah Cruella. Like, yeah. A lot of a lot of things. Things become popular. So they don't want to make them outwardly purely villainous anymore, um, and they they recast them a little bit. Um, not necessarily a bad thing, but definitely almost a trope in some senses. Yeah, I, and I'm not against definitely. following a character who is still bad necessarily, as long as they're interesting. Yeah, are are they doing that with Boba Fett though? Is the source material for the the series because it's a popular character from the eighties? So I don't know like what books have been written and all that. Canon is so difficult with Star Wars, isn't it? Because anything that was anything that was pre new stuff, they said, ah, like it still exists, and you can still absolutely you can still buy it, but it's rebranded as like Star Wars Legends, which means if it doesn't fit in with a new thing. It's not true if it's contradictory, but a fun way that you can play with it in your imagination is just imagine it's a story that was told, which may or may not be true, depending on what we decide to use in our new films going forward. Mm. So if a new thing yeah, contradicts yeah. an old thing, yeah. it's not canon. And if it doesn't contradict it, then it is. That's yeah. like the Simpsons it's thing of if something unexplained happens or you notice a continuity error, a wizard did it. It's that. It's that. But legal speak. <laughs> yeah. What about what about you, Andy? Have you seen anything? Um, just the one, just the one watch of note that I wanted to bring up. I watched something I've been waiting to watch for a little while now. It has a sequel while I've been trying to get around to watching it. It's called Nobody Sleeping in the Woods Tonight, which is a Polish uh, slasher horror movie. Mm-hmm. Um, for those people who are a little adverse to subtitles, do not let that put you off. There is a perfectly acceptable, um, there's a perfectly acceptable dubbing on there as well on Netflix. Both, both that and the sequel are both on Netflix now. Um, it's a, it's a fairly standard in terms of delivery, middle of the road um, horror, like a, like a slasher movie. Interesting aesthetic. It was nice to see some different takes and different characters. I lived in Poland for a while, so it was nice to see the the locations and well if it wasn't actually filmed in Poland it did a very good um balance of it it reminds me of the forests around there that you that you know there's really vast forests that you get in Poland um the lead character the lead actor in particular I'm going to absolutely murder her last name apologies if you listen listening uh <laughs> Yulia Win- Vineva Narkovic maybe um she plays the lead character your final girl if you like call a a girl called zosha um it looks like she's she's in the sequel to it as well and she's in um another really fun looking horror comedy called all my friends are dead um which i'm gonna have to seek out as well 
and there are some there are some good interesting scenes out there and some nice horror boogeymen like perfectly acceptable good worth the watch and i'm going to watch to see what else this team are coming up with because it feels like they have good energy for it and some good ideas mm-hmm. so i'll be watch. i'll be checking out some more of that I might have a look at that yeah it's worth it so both that and the sequel are on netflix and i know sometimes i know we're all with all these things to watch you have to multitask a bit which sometimes reduces your ability to watch things with subtitles because then you need your eyes and your ears to permanently be on it but the dubbing in it is fine it's good to hear Okay, and apart from that, we've all watched a lovely slice of ape-based horror. Yep. The third and final film Link. in the unofficial horror hangout monkey horror trilogy. Uh, it's a film called Link. Uh, so, Link is a 1986 British horror film starring Elizabeth Shue. Is that you say it? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, and Terence Stamp, along with a trio of simian stars, which consist of and we've got their actors' names here: Locke (laughs) as Link, Jed as Imp, and Carrie as Voodoo. Now, the title character Link is a super intelligent yet malicious chimpanzee, played by an orangutan. If you didn't notice, who lashes out against his masters when they try to have him euthanized. Uh, So it's directed by. Richard Franklin, written by Everett de Roche, from a story by Lee David Zlotoff. Those people getting involved in this. Score was provided by Jerry Goldsmith. The score, which is a definite highlight um, of the film, I would say. So um, it's got 6.0 on IMDb. On Rotten Tomatoes, 44% critic score, 33% audience score. 3.0 3.0 on Letterboxd. Got some choice reviews here from Letterboxd oh, users. <laughs> uh, Barry Dracula says, I'm sure there's ethical issues about training a monkey to wear a little suit and smoke cigars, but what if they like wearing a little scoot, a little suit and smoking cigars? Three stars. Gary Linden says, believe in science. Three stars. Uh, and Brian West says, solid monkey movie the tone is more serious than i expected except the music which seems hell-bent on convincing you this movie is gremlins or something i i I made a note of that like it does have gremlins things but my first note for the whole film is opens with off-brand beetlejuice thing yeah (laughs) i can't even not like do it is very yeah it's very (laughs) that was like beetlejuice meets last of the summer wine (laughs) (laughs) That's exactly what I'm going for. Uh, so yeah, this film I pretty sure I didn't know existed until maybe you mentioned it, Ben. I think that may ben, have been. I think I know of it because of Ben. Yeah. So what is every what is your relationship with this film, Ben? How, when did you? Well, I, it? I know of it because of you guys. So you're on about monkey horror, so oh, I searched out monkey it's horror. Like so a... who who knows who it's came up with it? Relationship. It's Inception. Yeah. So we, is it? Do, have we mentioned it before, or is it just we were looking at what some horror movies? No, you were just horror. talking about monkey Eight horrors, horror. and you got yeah, as yeah. far as Dunstan checks in, and I yeah. thought there's got to be other ones out there. There's got to be other ones out yeah. there. If not, we want more. As horror fans, we want more monkey horror because there is something. <laughs> Do we? <laughs> Do we? I think when we I come to the no. end, we'll have to work out which is our favorite of the trilogy. If a brand new monkey yeah. horror movie came out, I would be excited. I know. I, I think would. if these if these films were redone, I think on on a yeah. better budget, better script, with Andy yeah. Serkis playing the with, apes. With, <laughs> I, <laughs> the role he Maybe he's in this. I don't know. He could be like yeah, credited, run, running upstairs or something like that. Could have been. He might be pushing exactly. that van, Yeah, because there are definitely moments in this film where there's a cut. There's a cutaway scene from the chimpanzee slash orangutan, who's clearly just been obviously been dyed with darker yeah generally that is in the that is in method the production acting. notes that like because they method because acting. they got an orangutan to play a uh, a chimp they just dyed their naturally orange hair they dyed it black and put fake ears on him so he looked more like a chimp they put i don't even know his ears prosthetic ears humiliating for him what have they got just like tiny little ears usually it's weird I don't know isn't it? what an orangutan's think... ears look like why not just have the, have it be an orangutan? Why it's did not it, in the script? You can why did it have? It. Why did it have <laughs> to be a chimp? It's a true story. 
1985 <laughs> or whenever when this was being written, yeah, did Find Replace exist? Had Microsoft Word come that far? Clippy wasn't even born. Oh, I see what you mean. <laughs> Um, so yeah, maybe they couldn't do it. So I, I've t- done this on a typewriter, mate. I can't change all this. <laughs> um, <laughs> wow. So yeah, like we'll, we will go to great expense to dye this 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 orangutan and get him some I fake ears. Thought, I wonder what I thought was happening. Like he's an actor. He knows. He's the makeup <laughs> chair. <laughs> Sorry, excuse me. What 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 are you doing to me? We're just dying you because you're going to be playing a chimpanzee. Method acting as a chimp. The director sat down and told him. Called so, Link. Yeah. All right, Locke, you're going to be playing Link. <laughs> yeah, Locke. He, he's a uh, he's a tw- he's a 25 year old chimp, but you know you got the range. He's definitely got the range. Although, yeah, I mean he's good. He's good at some things, but facially, I feel like he's only really got two looks, isn't he? We've mentioned this. He's got the, the <laughs> yeah, standard, yeah. standard yeah. orangutan roar. Which is good, just showing off his gnashes. And then the other one is like, uh, I don't know, what kind of face would you say it was? Like he's and he's waiting for someone to smell it. <laughs> it's, it's a side eye, isn't it? <laughs> it's, a definite... a, it's an eye roll as well, isn't it? It's definitely an eye roll in it. He's got an eye roll, oh, and yeah. he's got and he's got and he's got the side eye, like he's uh, like when when he's there with the professor, it's kind of like he's in polite company and he's noticed the professor's like chewing really loud or something. He's he's looking at him like. <laughs> chewing too loudly. Yeah, chewing too loudly. As if to say, shut up. But he's not going to have a word with him about it until after the, like, on the on the way home in the car. He's going to be giving him. You were chewing really loudly, all right? And I was looking at you. This is quite weird because the plot of this on Wikipedia is so sparse. It's got like two paragraphs. I find like another sort of breakdown of the plot. But I guess it. I mean, I guess it. The plot is quite sparse. So it does open with a scene where it's like a point of view of Link, isn't it? Milling about on some rooftops, climbing around. Uh, but is it Link? No, it's not. It's, um, no, it's, it's Imp, I believe. It's Imp. Oh, it's Imp. Okay. Imp the right. yeah, there we go. Imp. So clearly at the first hurdle, I've fallen. <laughs> and, <laughs> this is Link's point of view. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll write that down for the podcast. They're going to love yeah. that. This is this is yeah. Imp in a really generic uh, set design because I noticed as they're looking over the town, he's like in Albert Square. Um <laughs> <laughs> He's in Albert Square, East End of London, um, and there are some really great names. Did any, any of you guys make a note of some of the shops that, that they're in this? I did Oswald? not know. Cancer did. Well, Andy, there please. is a uh, there is a takeaway um, that's called Fast Food, and that is next door <laughs> to uh, to an exotic exotic dance emporium, which is called Strip Club. <laughs> I mean, no expense spared. No expense yeah. spared. And also, you know what? You know where you stand. Where's this? Where's this film set? Just in, just in. I think generic town, English town. I think it's like, I like. I don't like. I haven't checked the nationality of the of the writer and director and so on, but it feels like it's produced by someone who thinks England is like five square miles, because it is like, like Richard it Franklin. is set in. It is set in. Like the East End of London, because that little girl's like, call cool, Lammy at the beginning. She's like a little Mary Poppins kid. Um, yeah. And then... A pigeon gets killed as well, right? Yeah, pigeon gets killed. And then later, we go to, like, the London School of Science, I assume, in London. Oh, yeah. And then they just live at, like... And then the professor, who apparently teaches at the School of Science, his it's thing is at the seaside. The just, yeah. Like, on the edge of a cliff somewhere. His commute is absolutely horrific. <laughs> yeah, yeah in London, famously him. close to cliffs. So Richard Franklin, um, who directed the movie, is Australian. Um, and I think he lived in America. It, so he made Psycho 2 um, and something else, maybe. He's made other stuff. Psycho 2, something called Cloak and Dagger. And he made Link. And then he's not made anything else really of note. I know he but, was, I saw with the thing with Link, he was super pissed off that little bits of it got cut away as each level of production came through. Like, you know, a few minutes was chopped off um, here and then the, the production cut. It was and all then, the like, bits. The producers that... got, and he's like, you've made it less coherent. And then the French version <laughs> cut off this scene in Albert Square. Yeah. Oh, did they? <laughs> oh, yeah, but it's, it's all missing from uh, other versions. I remember reading that, yeah. I can I can imagine why the first scene might because it would confuse idiots like me into thinking like, it was linked to the view. Also, to be fair, it goes nowhere. So we see 
um, POV people, <laughs> after he's had a look at strip club and fast food, follows <laughs> follows a cat up a drain pipe, and then we get a very brief murder mystery where there's a little girl that's sitting in bed, um, and her family are watching. God knows what they're watching, like the black and white, like cultural appropriation review on TV, <laughs> where there's like some like African tribal dancers on a black and white film with like a show girl, like a, a woman who appears in a dress to be like one of those like flapper girls, but she's in a gorilla suit. I don't and remember then this bit at all. She's what? singing a song about voodoo. Um, and then the little girl screams. Um, the parents run through to the bedroom after the aerial's been ripped out of the wall. It's been damaged. Um, she goes, Blimey hell, what are you screaming about? The little girl didn't scream because, as I was led to believe, an ape has come into the room. She just screamed because she heard a cat scream. And then we pan up to the roof. And earlier, it's a little murder mystery. It's like a little mini episode of Columbo for you. Because earlier, like cutting between the, the videos on the TV, we see the cat approaching the pigeon coop. Uh, there's, a, there's some pigeons on the roof. They keep them. There must be race. There must be a racing pigeon family. Um, and the cat's creeping up to them. And then we see the top of the roof, and um, we see that the pigeon coop has been broken into. There's a dead pigeon on the floor. There's feathers all over the place. I'm like, open and shut case, Poro. The cat's the murderer. The cat's uh, the cat's done that murder. And then we scroll across. I mean, cat's That's dead it. as well. Dead as well. On the roof, the midsummer <laughs> murder music could just drop. Then, who who is the real killer? With the bloody cat as well, out of order. Two murders, two bodies. So we're meant to who think the this, murderer? Was, this was imp, right? Yeah, because the professor says yeah. later on, imp loves eating cats. That's horrible, isn't it? It's probably I'd not okay like, that you just know that, professor. I don't want to be mates of you. I'm sorry, imp, murdering cats. And are we meant to think? Obviously, no spoilers for the end. We will get to it. But are we meant to think that this end sequence was down to Imp as well? Yeah, I believe so, yeah. I yeah. think Imp might be the villain. Of Imp's After all, the true there's a villain. Good, there's a good Link's thing just trying Link to warn might people be about Imp. <laughs> Link's just trying to warn people about Imp. He's constantly just like going, fucking run, Imp's going to fuck you up. And they're like, ah, Link, no, don't hurt me. And he's like, what's wrong with you? Why aren't you listening yeah. to me? I, th- I think Link might have been framed this whole thing. This is, Imp is the Kaiser Soze years earlier. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Spoilers for... Oh, if I don't say what Kaiser Soze is from, I haven't spoiled yeah, anything. Yeah, yeah. Spoilers for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so smooth. <laughs> so smooth. Well, like, you think, like, imps are sort of like, hopping away at the end and then suddenly just stands up and puts a suit on. Yeah. <laughs> and lights yeah. a cigar. He, get, he gets in the car. Goes, oh, I'm just a baby. Just a baby. I don't look in there. I haven't been choking sheep out all night. Um, um, Evil yeah. bastard. Yeah, he, he could be behind it all. This could be the mis- the biggest mystery of all. But yeah, that yeah. that scene we don't don't worry about that that London based family and that little girl because we will never see them again. Never, never see it again, are we? And it's all, and gone. When it's confirmed, it's just a throwaway scene where the doctor just says, "Oh, Billy Feathers are all around. Imp's been mucking about eating birds and killing cats and shit. Oh, great. There we go. That's it." Yeah, you could just have that bit, but I don't know why any of the start of it is in there, apart from yeah. the music the, and the start a, a, human very... doing, a human doing impressions of a, <laughs> of a chimpanzee. Yeah, it was like that, wasn't it? I was Re- like, really ah. bad. You'd think they've got all the footage because they've been working with chimpanzees and orangutans making the film. Should we use some of that audio we've got? No, 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 we'll do it ourselves. Ooh, ooh, ooh. We'll do it ourselves. We've got a great guy over here. He, just, he loves doing it. He loves doing yeah. it. It could have been the on. first gigging job for who's his face who does all the Frank Welker. Yeah, Frank Welker. <laughs> Frank, could have been his Frank first Welker. gig. <laughs> Mr. Additional Voices it, himself. Eh? Yeah. Bloody hell. Uh, um, so then we're introduced to our main character, Elizabeth yeah. Shue, um, who plays American college student. What's her name? You know, you know what, Ben? <laughs> I, I've just been calling her Elizabeth but Shue the whole time. I've been calling her Elizabeth Shue all the, the way through my video. It's Jane Chase. Oh, so Jane, she's... like Jane Goodall <laughs> in the eighties. Exactly, yeah. She's <laughs> that's what I was thinking. A young American zoology student studying in England who takes the opportunity to assist Dr. Philip with his studies. Which is kind of weird because it's almost like she's like, I will take anything you're willing to offer me. And he's like, 
40 quid a year. I mean, month. I mean, I mean, 14 week. pound a week, he offers her. How much did he offer? 14. 14 pound a week. I mean, 1980s, that would, would have bought you a mansion like that, I guess. But yeah, so he I says, thought, I thought it was 40. That's what no, I, I thought. I wrote, I thought I thought it was 40. 40. 14 pounds a week. 40 quid oh, yeah. a week with as bored and as much food yeah, yeah, as you it. want. Bored, food, and apes, and being in constant state of peril that an ape was going to rip your face <laughs> yeah, off in your sleep on you the whole time, or perv on you, exactly. Um, but yeah, also, obviously, Professor already that um, Dr. Stephen Phillips never trust a man with two first names, Stephen Phillip, um, <laughs> Professor Phillip, or Professor Negging, because that's what he's always on about. He's 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 negging everyone. He's saying, to, "Oh, let's get these three fine young men out." Though you get like he's doing a he's doing a lecture on apes. He's one of these guys. He's a he's a bit of a wrong gun. So like you know, he says, "Oh, go on then, tell us uh, tell us the difference between apes." I would have gone for a simpler answer, but we wear clothes, Professor. <laughs> What's the difference between apes and humans? I wear apes hats. Are fucking idiots. I brush my teeth. <laughs> like like um, some, like something along those lines, but like one I got of, a bank came. The real yeah, some Spelling. real some real pronunciation in the class puts his hand up and like goes, Is it that uh only man makes war war on his own kind of record? No, actually. Yeah, that's not what happens. Apes do it all the time. Apes Don't come to my lesson on ape one oh one and not know that. Idiots. In now, fact, come and try and yank this monkey out of this cage. They can't fucking do it. Oh, yeah, they're trying to yank it. And I go, actually, don't, you don't have to yank a monkey out of a cage. You have to befriend it over years and now tell it to come out of the cage. That's much easier. Yeah. Cheers, Stephen Phillip. Yeah, Stephen Phillip said, yeah, you should want to train him for years and he'll come and stand next to you and then imitate you walking. i got to tell you, as much as I know, in, in the modern era, we all know now, Probably not so cool to make actual apes act in your films. But this little monkey, this this uh, <laughs> imp here, he does some good faces, doesn't he? When he's walking up and down on the desk, <laughs> he's, he's got he has got far more range. Sorry, Link, but he's got far more range than Link, unfortunately. Yeah, he's got all he's got all the emotions. Imp the chimp plays an absolute blinder when he's standing on the desk pretending to be the professor, walking up and down. His little faces. <laughs> I think that's another thing why we don't find apes as scary is because th- there's something very human about them. And when they, especially when they mimic humans, you're like, oh, he's, he's an absolute legend. Look at him. He loves it. Yeah, they've got and character, they're... haven't they? That's, that's the thing. Yeah, Obviously exactly. We know got... that he's thinking about <laughs> strangling sheep at the time, <laughs> eating cats. Strangling those sheep. Um, so yeah, that's why he was out all night because he strangled a few and then he, then he fell asleep after about 10. Count them. He don't want to eat them. He just wants to massacre them as well. It's not <laughs> just, just going to go massacring. Yeah, yeah I just, I, I I hunt just hunt like to waste sport. these cats that I'm just yeah, literally just killing them. Um, so Elizabeth, sorry Jane, after the class goes up to Doctor Philip and she's like, "I would do anything to be your assistant. I would you looking for an assistant?" That you make some joke saying, "Oh yeah, this is when he's like, yeah, um, <laughs> not a bloke, do I? And he's like, well." What's that got to do with it? What about um, sexual discrimination? He goes, no, I'm collecting jizz. That's <laughs> literally man. what he says, as <laughs> if it's like the t- a normal thing. Basically, all of my assistants have to jizz in this cup, which I then keep in my per- personal collection. And again, <laughs> nothing comes of that. There is none of his experiments yeah. that involve cum. He must have just been <laughs> gathering it up. <laughs> <laughs> gathering it up in that well. It wasn't water at the bottom of it. <laughs> yeah. It was a I'm gonna, see, well. I'm gonna see if I can fill this entire well. <laughs> I, I didn't even think alone. of that. Like nothing happens at all, does it? He must just be storing it up here. He's not, he's yeah, he's not. He's not a mad <laughs> scientist. He's not trying to breed apes with the jizz. He's not trying to do anything along those lines. There's loads of just like, is collecting it. I don't know why. There's loads of weird things about his character where he seems like this sort of like dinosaur, this like sexist dinosaur, but they never like follow through with it. Like you kind of think. He's going to be a certain way. I think this film really does suffer when he's out of the picture. It feels like it really does feel like something's missing. Like it feels like that's missing in some ways, but in other ways, it's a lot better because that's the thing when he offers the job for fourteen pounds a week when he's probo and he says, "Well, my cleaners away, and I could use some housekeeping." And 
Oh yeah. And Jane goes, Well, being a woman, I am more predisposed to it. And I'm like, oh no. <laughs> I am good at cooking and cleaning, being a woman. And he goes, Yes, of course. And you and you don't jizz. <laughs> and that's one thing I know as well. You and also you don't jizz. Writes it down. So you can't help me with that, but you can help me with um looking after looking after these looking after these apes in my mansion over the summer holidays. Is it over the summer holidays? Yeah, I guess it is, isn't it? I guess that's why, because like you said, that'd be a bitch of a commute if he was going there every day. For 40 quid a week, that's the thing. I mean, bored and everything's fine, but like, as soon as you finish working for the... You don't, you're you constantly on the go. You can't relax. I still, I still reckon it's 14 quid a week. I reckon you guys think he's being more generous than he is. 14 pounds <laughs> a week. I definitely heard 40, but maybe I was just adding for inflation. I was like, yeah. sounds about right, 40 quid. Yeah, it can't be, can't be 14. It still must have been a lot back then, wasn't it? Like even 14 quid a week. It must, it must have been a lot. Once, you've got, once you've got your bed and board taken out of it, maybe. Maybe he's like, maybe he's factored those in as deductions. Yeah. <laughs> Possibly, yeah. Uh, so she pretty much goes straight away. So she's got a boyfriend as well, and he's got two mates, and they're quite kind of ribbing him, going, Oh, she's going to stay with a professor, is she? Well, she ain't going to get any work done, is she? <laughs> yeah. What's going to be going on? <laughs> Professor unprofessional, Professor Pork. Yeah, he's like, yeah, they're all they're all ribbing him straight away. Um, poor David, whose yeah. name gets like the professor also very disrespectful, gets his name wrong on purpose. Well, Later on, oh Darren, Darren. <laughs> I mean Daryl. No, stop saying his name slightly wrong. Um, they uh, David is not too pleased about it. Although Jane is playing it down. So, oh, we've only been seeing each other for a bit, really. Yeah, knocking about. She, she was fucking off for like the entire of the summer vacation. Mugging him oh, up. Well, I've got loads, I've got loads of things planned we could be doing. Oh, sorry, I'm gonna stay with this bloke and his apes. Stay this bloke and his apes for 14 pounds a week. That's all right. I know <laughs> I know where I stand now. At least I know where I stand. Yeah. How um, does she get how does she get there? Does she just get dropped? She gets she... a she gets a taxi ride and they drive past Chekhov's savage dogs. Yeah, the checks are doing good. <laughs> yeah. Watch out for them savage dogs. Watch out for them see... savage dogs that roam the moors. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I remember. Oh, do you know what I wanted to see though? Like, I know we saw. <laughs> I was just about to say I wanted to see a bit of monkey on dog action, but we do get a bit. Yeah, I, I will put it out there and say that I thought, in many ways, that that I pre- predicted the ending badly. Um, I thought it was going to be a case of the dogs save the day, proving that they are, in fact, man's best friend. I thought good. it was going to be a standoff oh, that where, a good idea, that. where the ape was torn apart by dogs. I really thought it would have been a more horrific ending. This was another question <laughs> I had. How fast are apes, like chimpanzees and orangutans? Like, Can you outrun them fairly easily? Oh, well, if you're Elizabeth, no, she, I would you have can. Thought she so. absolutely <laughs> outsprints him. Yeah, that's And she's I... running like a lunatic as well. She runs like a child, oh, so... flailing her arms around like <laughs> and they start at the same point as well, don't they? It's yeah. like, ready, set, go. I'm well in front of you now. <laughs> also, the karate kid, don't you know? Maybe the link, maybe Link is counting down to you. like, okay, we'll go on three, Link. One, two, oh no, you've gone early. <laughs> um, yeah, well, that's smoking. Can't. It's bad for his lungs. That's what that yeah. is. <laughs> Punching too many darts. He's ready to. Yeah, he's really suffering for it. So yeah, we see Chekhov's savage dogs, and then, for reasons non known to no to nobody, the professor's got the wrong day, so he's out, just walking over the moors. Um, oh yeah, and he also says, "Hang on a minute, you're supposed to come to tomorrow." And she's like, yeah, "Come in tomorrow." He's got a taxi for me. He's like, "Oh yeah." He's like, "You idiot." <laughs> I think he's trying to show. Oh, he's so wrapped up in his work. You don't know. Oh, don't know what day of the week it is. Projecting spunk or something like that into his <laughs> arms. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's the, the, ape, the, ape, the ape things are the least sinister experiments. <laughs> when he comes from the early, he's been at like his, like, is in his like shed with his jizz based experiment. <laughs> like, can I make a man out of this? Just pouring it into a mold. Um, who knows? Who knows what he's up to? Um, but yeah, he's. For reasons unknown to anyone who's got the wrong day, but don't worry, because Link answers the door. And Link, Link knows what day it is. Like one of his ancestors <laughs> in the future, he checks her in. 
Oh my life! He does. Oh my god, he does. <laughs> Here's your room. Here's your room. Oh, do, you feel, uh, do you like that? Do you like your room? She's like, oh, it's lovely. Oh, it's lovely. I'll show us the bathroom. He takes her by the hand, and shows her the bathroom. Here's the bathroom. Ooh. Wink, wink. Nudge, nudge. And so, uh, have you got uh, anything that can be damaged in your bags? Because it's it's fucked now, mate. It's yeah, like he's ramming your stuff up the stairs. Yeah, my elbow, I've thrown my, it in your room. Yeah. Yeah, my elbows don't work the same way as you. Yeah. Are, so I'm <laughs> wailing these around. <laughs> Absolute nutter. Oh, my fine china's in there, Link. Um, Still in there now, but it's there's more of it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit, now it's a hundred piece set. So there's three, um, there's three apes in total in there. So obviously, Imp is the little like cute, apparently like harmless one, and then there's cats, another then. one. There's another one called Voodoo, who's like super muscular, like yeah, Hench Voodoo, who Hench is, Voodoo, like the Hulk is, Hogan of the apes, who is Imp's mom. Okay, okay. I didn't know Imp. that. Yeah, I, Imp's I, I, mom I, I, and is uh, apparently notoriously quite quite violent. And then you have Link, who is a... Like a butler <laughs> that you think when you first meet him. I mean, he's, he is a butler. I think he had it. So he's had history like in the circus. Is that right? Yeah. And he can't yeah, let it the, go. He's the most educated out of them, isn't he? He's, that's how he seems to be. Yeah. He's, he's a bit old. He's, he's got history of the circus, and he like can't let it go. He's like, I'm gonna dr- wear this costume every single day. I'm gonna smoke cigars till my lungs pack up. <laughs> yeah, um, and I suppose at this point he just seems like a normal. I say normal. It's not very normal, but like, a normal like a, eight butler, like you would see in any town. Normal eight butler you see in any '90s comedy. Yeah, uh, with an eccentric scientist man living in a mansion. Yeah. Ross Geller would have one. A smaller type of ape, monkey that's got a tail. Um, <laughs> not this one. This one is no monkeys. One hundred percent apes at the professor. Stephen and his Phillips ears house. are definitely stuck on. Yeah, those <laughs> ears have been glued ears. to his head. Um, to be honest, after the professor comes back, though, guys, I would say, as a British person, probably the most horrific scene of the movie. This. I had to stop watching. This is the worst scene <laughs> oh, wait. that I have seen. Is this, is this cups of tea? Oh, it's... good God. <laughs> yeah, cups of tea. Wait, but not only oh. that, he's a British man doing it. He's... I thought if she did it... Oh, it was... Zod. Yeah. Zod. He... Oh. For fuck's sake, Zod. God. <laughs> he just turns around and he's made cups of tea in the microwave. Like some kind of absolute animal. No, he's, 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 the, like, he's, he's the animal. Yeah. He's, he's, yeah. He's, <laughs> Yeah, all this talk about apes not having civilization. What are you doing? Like you've, you, you're microwaving tea. Like I've, I've been there in an emergency situation when there's, you know, your tea's gone cold. You've got to try and have. To, I've tried to revive a cup of tea in the microwave. I've been there. Not the same. But I've never made a cup of tea from cold in the microwave, let alone loose leaf tea. So he gets out and goes, yeah, just to <laughs> scrape the leaves off the top there. Is that what he Yeah. Yeah, oh my oh, god, it back it's into um, space. with a little spoon pouring it in the sink. Oh, look how look how convenient this is a bloody microwave. Fuck off, God. <laughs> Do you think that they had like <laughs> like a microwave company wanted to get the microwave included in the movie? So they were yeah. like, right. And he's like, phenomenal get- invention, isn't it? Maybe the microwave was like the newest thing. So this is like the version of <laughs> bring it back to the matrix. This is your flip phone. Yeah. <laughs> it must have been, it must have been. This uh, is why would you do that? Baseball. Yeah, this is Max using a laptop on, on the channel tunnel. This is your big tech show, like showpiece. <laughs> Microwave in a tea. Horrific. And then doesn't he say to uh, Jane as well? He's like, make us a bit of breakfast. I'll meet you in the that's, meet that's the next day when he's hanging in the lab. Oh, that's the next they, day. They have a um they have like a they have like a dinner first, but first he does the this is where he does the gremlins rules. Because at first it's like <laughs> And he goes, there are, course, only, yeah. there are only four rules for looking after these apes. One, you must never treat them as equals. Um, old Professor Never treat them as equals. Never, tr- never treat them as equals, number one. First rule. If you're splitting some food equals. with them, right? If you're splitting something with them, like a Snickers bar, don't give them half. Give yourself slightly more and make sure they know it. Yeah. You could, oh, they don't. They don't play the mum rules where one of you cuts and the other one chooses which half you want. The, the yeah. way that you can always insist on the fairest. Yeah. No. Um, absolutely. Absolutely. But yeah, not. she just says, "Yeah, you, you you cut it and then you give them a slightly smaller bit." So don't treat them as equals. Number one. Number two. Um, always forgive them. 
So like if they've been, <laughs> if, if they've been two, dicks, always if, forgive them. If you've been dicks, because he points out because there's one bit Imp has been a shithead or something, and he goes, All right, I forgive you. You've always got to forgive them. I don't know what happens. They, they start to resent it if you don't forgive them. Yeah, um, what happens if you don't forgive them? They just get crushed by guilt. Yeah. Oh. Testicles off. That's what that is. Yeah. <laughs> the testicles off straight away. And right, then you've got to it. forgive them, or the face is gone. So, oh, yeah. you can take them testicles. Oh, yeah, that's it. Like straight, you'll you'll notice it begins uh, like a like an undefeatable cycle. Like it starts off with you don't forgive them. Next thing, listening to the Rasmus, looking all sad, <laughs> sends them into a real emo phase. Evo phase. Guilty. You have you dyed your hair black as well? Oh, yeah, you dyed your hair black. You were a ginger <laughs> yesterday. Have you dyed your hair black? I feel Dang so empty, tank, is what you're saying, Professor Professor Philip. Um, uh, rule number three: <laughs> Do not get involved in their squabbles. They'll sort them they'll sort it out themselves. They'll sort them out. They'll sort it out themselves. Usually, if one of them ended up dead. Yeah. <laughs> and number four: Little bit of a joke one for you. There's some shit in the living room. Sort that out, will you? Oh yeah. <laughs> There's some turds in the hallway, sort of out. Like Tron, like. <laughs> Literally, what he says: There's some turds in the hallway. I, I, I'm sure he says to her like. I'll just come here and do the the cleaning and all that sort of stuff. And then the next day he's like, come and do some experiments with the monkeys. Come on. <laughs> she, yes. I didn't sign up for this. She said I can't do it. Come on. It escalates Still paying so 14 quickly. pounds a week for me to go and do this. Uh, <laughs> Elizabeth Shue gives Professor Philip a taste of his own negging when he talks about how old Link is. He's always 25. And he goes, oh, he's almost old enough to be my dad. And the professor's oh, yeah. like, all right, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. I'm an old fuck. <laughs> That's what you mean, isn't it? Yeah, okay, we've all been yeah. there. But you're right, yeah, Link Link whips out the cigars, right? And this is when he put, talks about him being the master of fire. The master of fire, yeah. But in terms of a master of fire, he's pretty shit, let's be honest. <laughs> let's just give him <laughs> credit where it's due. But in terms of being a master at fire, he just like, what? What's he doing? Lighting the he, oven. He can eventually strike a match. After he can eventually, goes. if you give him hundred matches, right? He will <laughs> eventually manage to strike at least nine of those. If you give it to him, he's the master of fire. He's like lighting the pilot light. <laughs> he's like whoa, and he seems a bit afraid of fire. Like there's a few times where it, when it like sort of goes off really quick, he's like fuck. Yeah, I imagine that might be because maybe steps. that's a, maybe that's a slip in the acting. Maybe because apes are naturally actually afraid of fire. Shit! Bloody I man. think it was. He fucks about with fire that much. I've had to get a bloody microwave. That's what I had to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because he's always he's always dicking about with the oven, putting the putting do, grill on. Do you think as well? This came out like just after Gremlins, didn't it? Yeah, and it's. Jerry Goldsmith doing the music. Oh. Do you reckon he said to that director, well, I've just done this film and what we did in it is we've got some rules that we have to have. Maybe if you incorporate some rules into your script, it'd I reckon be just went, as good. It's like, oh, good idea. He went, we've done a soundtrack for Gremlins and uh, here are some of, the, here are yeah. some of the tracks that didn't make the final cut. You can have them. <laughs> these, are my, oh, these, yeah. are my, these are my drafts. Uh, for these are my one. drafts, yeah. <laughs> Because it is like weird and jaunty, and like it kind of feels, it feels like it's from a different film. I mean, I don't yeah. know what kind of film you would. It's got sort some of... Danny Elfman qualities to it. Definitely, and yeah, there's, a, mi- so, and there's yeah. a mic, and there's a microwave in it. Maybe that microwave is the one from Gremlins. <laughs> <laughs> I think it makes it feel less like a horror. Again, more like that sort of. That's why the threat from Link isn't that. He's just a bit of a bumbling idiot, isn't he? Well, yeah, he's nice at the minute. He has a he has a cigar. Um... Yeah, yeah, he, has, he has a cigar, and then the next day he's they're all together he... doing some experiments. Oh god, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, so they go into his what kind of experiments are they initially? Well, it's like a it's an IQ experiment. <laughs> oh god, yeah. Oh my like, god. Like first Elizabeth Shoe and then Imp <laughs> get completely mugged off because the professor goes, All right, everyone, get get together. All right, right, you sit there. Impute it there. He's going to do some pattern recognition now. Well, he doesn't explain that. That like the explanation I gave is more than the professor gives Elizabeth Shoe. He yeah. hands her a book and goes, "Right, go. You got ten seconds." <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. Here's an IQ but, test. You yeah, just hurts. get the world's biggest clock and put yeah. this right next oh, to yeah. him. <laughs> he's, he's literally got the countdown clock. 
on there. <laughs> and it's like counting Are you going to lose to an ape? Are you going to lose to a chimpanzee, you idiot? You moron. A, ch- a chimpanzee who's done this test hundreds of times and I've literally not explained it to you properly. No. I've just sat you down in front of a bank of buttons and said, you're wasting time. Go. Well, luckily, imp. Just, he's got the attention, the attention, shitty attention span. I think well, the, the thing that happens is Imp wins the first two, and then Elizabeth Shoe like it's like a it's like a classic Dragon Ball Z moment here, where she's like, ah, now I'll get serious, and then all of a sudden starts absolutely as you would expect. Um, Imp <laughs> is no match at a game of simple pattern recognition versus Elizabeth, Elizabeth Shoe. She starts soon, absolutely caning see- him. As soon as he goes behind, he gives up, which is yeah. pathetic. Yeah, really, <laughs> not the attitude you want to have. It's like yeah. there's always a kid that you hung out with, like at school, when they would be playing football, and he was always giving it the big one when he was beating you. And as soon as you pull one back, he's like, oh, "I ain't playing anymore. I'm taking my ball home." Yeah, it's like play- it's Grow like up. you know, years later playing video games online when someone rage quits. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So basically. Imp rage quits it and starts chucking the book around. <laughs> he goes, no! He starts, he starts doing it. And to be fair, Terrence Stamp doesn't take it much better because Elizabeth, she, she, she's not a bad winner. She's very gracious about it. She goes, well, it's not fair, to be fair. I mean, she doesn't go with the angle I would have gone for. She goes, I have been raised on looking for patterns in letters and numbers. Whereas what she should have said was, I'm a human being. I can read and I can, you know, I can drive a car. <laughs> Like my species has has invented air travel. You're like making excuses like for why she beat Link. Ah, oh, well he was distracted, wasn't he? He's just a little silly sausage, isn't he? Link. Oh, he's having a bad day. Like, 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 you know, um, on a bad day. Imp. And so it's at this point it's been established that Doctor Stephen Phillip is selling um, voodoo to voodoo, some random yeah. buyer. Yeah, he's been and on so the phone. Voodoo's, in, in, a, like voodoo's in a cage, and he says, "Don't go near the, don't go near the cage." What does he say? He says, they're don't get near a caged in ape. They can reach farther than you think. It's got long arms, haven't they? Oh, Jesus. Just let him out. Which, which gonna... Doesn't come into play anymore in the film uh, again. No. <laughs> one of them things. Yeah, one of those things that comes up because they finish this experiment and he and he says, he kicks off and wangs all of Imp's plastic fruit over the floor. <laughs> um, Take that. And, and then says, look, he's been Take looking at fruit. shapes all his life. He's failed. Like, all Is this a bit where it all goes to like, it looks like it's cyberpunk running on a PS4, like all like 30 frames a second <laughs> yeah. or something. Like really yeah. chucky, like, what are you doing? Is that that's, supposed, that's that's supposed every to be time like... you get an ape point of view. Ape do point they, of view, do, yeah. Do apes weird. just have a lower frame rate than humans? If that's so, that explains why we why we do different things. Maybe well, that should be what they said in the lecture. Secret. But that's uh, not the start of the movie, is it? Rate than us. <laughs> the start oh, yeah, of the movie. Like, the movie it's is just like a normal The other person can the other ape can see in HD. Yeah. Well, I, I, well, maybe Imp can see in at least what maybe Imp can see in at least you know composite scart. But whereas, <laughs> yeah, whereas whoever this is that we see in a bit is fifty hertz. It's old pal. It's got the black borders <laughs> and everything. Um, but yeah, so the professor sends um, sends Jane off and says, "I'll oh, make some sarnies or something, will you?" Um, but don't worry if you hear a commotion. Um, because I'm gonna I'm gonna tranquilize uh voodoo and that'll be you know sometimes it's quite a noisy affair. Then what you do, yes. Professor, tra- traditionally tranquilizing something, usually quite quite quiet afterwards. <laughs> um but he's a bit of a bumbling professor because then he basically this is what gives me this is this is more of a mystery than scream, guys. Um no spoilers, Ben, don't worry. Um, there are no like I well slight spoiler for Scream I guess the murder is not an ape. Um, Hang on. Um, the professor's kind of bungling it around a little bit, and he's he's got annoyed with him, so he's legging it about, and he ends up getting like basically triple teamed by the by the apes because <laughs> he's he's trying to catch he's chasing. How did he cope? With the big How stick. did he cope before Jane arrived? Because he he's literally left alone with them for, for the first time since she arrived, and they get the better of him already. They surround him. Yeah, because Link does the like Link does like maybe it's the opposite day. Do you know that on day of recording? Apparently, it's opposite day today. Is it? How funny! That's that's that's. Uh, yeah, so maybe <laughs> much like today, it's opposite day, um, because. <laughs> 
he is he's trying to he's trying to catch imp with a big stick going you come here and because it's opposite day imp thinks he's going he means run away and be mental so uh, he's, he's running away from him he's not stopping to do his screeching so then says to link link um get his cage link gives him some side eye and thinks i'm onto this professor the opposite of getting his cage is to let the other ape out of this cage <laughs> so then he lets out the sometimes violent voodoo and then we just have a screen cut um we cut away as um the three apes have, have surrounded him an ape pylon perhaps we, d- we don't know an ape pylon triple team yeah and he's just got his stick hasn't he to defend himself you think he'd at least have his tranquilizer that he was going to use or his microwave. No, it's a, you know, well, something, yeah. It's just Very got hot, a ruler. Hot, hot, leafy tea in their face. Yeah. <laughs> tepid, some, some tepid tea. Tepid tea. <laughs> it's just tepid, so the joke's on you. Die. <laughs> yeah. It's Link kind of, it's kind of a ruined. bit frustrating that this kind of all, what what happens is all off screen, because I know that there's a bit of like a mystery for Ella, like, where has he gone? And it kind of moves the plot along, because Elizabeth, otherwise Elizabeth possibly would have just left. Sorry, Jane. Would have possibly just left um but the fact that she keeps believing he's going to come back kind of keeps it go- keeps her there and i guess it's quite interesting that it manages to remove like the phone from the scenario <laughs> because link's just like i'll, I'll fancy cooking the phone sticking a phone yeah. in a microwave <laughs> but the most he's better always than a cup of tea <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you what, yeah, if he's going to oven, maybe you think, maybe this is a protest about the society as well. He's like, well, if you think tea goes in a microwave, why not phones in the oven? Yeah. Why not phones as well? Yeah, you like that, do you? Idiot. Eat, yeah, he's that. there, he's got the pilot light on. Jane goes down the forbidden trapdoor, um, which is handy because the forbidden trapdoor comes down. I thought when she first opened it, it was going to be like an ape graveyard in this, and then the professor's yeah. going to be a wrong one. I but thought it wasn't. that. Yeah, it's just thought, the it's just the cellar, um, the cellar which leads all the way like to, to like sea. a smuggler's cove, like the famous five. Yeah, it's like that, yeah. The I was smugglers... thinking, how how can he afford to pay a uh, forty quid a week when his his heating bills must be through the roof? <laughs> yeah. the, the draft from the, the draft. coast coming straight up. <laughs> straight, into, straight, straight up and that's no, why it's only got microwave his tea it's an enclosed unit isn't it it won't get yeah. hot otherwise yeah um <laughs> the only way you can do it so she goes in there but basically it just means that she can go down there and when link is refusing not to try and blow the house up she can go and turn the <clears> gas off yeah i'm trying oh trying to blow up the house are you well instead of telling you no i mean she might tell him no i'm just going to turn the gas off jokes on you and he's like i'm gutted and then he gets a bit spooked when the fire go, when, it, when it goes oh you know you get a bit of a <laughs> it's not quite backdraft but you get a little bit of a flare of gas in the oven um and yeah yeah and then she goes told you not to and he goes to like they've got like a talking machine maybe the prototype that would become amy's Sign language talker <laughs> yeah. later on, and he goes it's and presses. Like, he goes and presses yeah, the, the symbols for like cook phone. Link like, cooks phone. Cooks and she phone. goes, no, don't cook phone. Cook phone. Cook bad. He goes, no, cook phone. <laughs> good. <laughs> no, cook phone. Good. So, no, I like I'm cooking, it. I'm cooking the phone. I'm all right. And he and he goes off and he's. Um, yeah, he does get the shit out of that phone, doesn't he? Yeah, he gets the phone all he gets the phone all cooked up. Um, already at this point, um, Jane has been to the professor when she took those sarnies up, and he goes, "Go away, will you? Busy." Um, yeah, very rude, unnecessary. And she gets a phone a phone call from like an anxious um, get. Like everyone's got this. It's typical, isn't it? You know, sometimes when you're going to see parents get a bad rap but it's quite often parents isn't it that you go into the house and they phone you quite often slowing you down in what you're doing and leaving them like phoning all right is everything all right yeah i'm just phoning to see if you'd left yet i would have done <laughs> i just wanted to know if you're on the see if you left yet and evidently you haven't yeah, the, so the, get on the fucking road yeah you know what you know it drastically speed me up being at this place i meant to not been on the phone because I've kind of stopped what I was doing to answer this call. 
yeah. worst of that worst of that is if you're ever going somewhere and it's you've got a sat nav there as well because people will always phone when they expect you to arrive aka if you're driving between cities that bit when you're on the intricate part of the drive when you really need to listen to your sat it doesn't you don't, i don't need to listen to the sat nav saying <laughs> stay on the a74 for 38 miles that's fine it's when I'm it's when I'm at the very last bit and you're like, especially going somewhere in a city centre and it's like when you have to turn your radio down. That yeah. that bit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, really, yeah. and then you're really on that thing. And if your phone's on your sat nav, then everything goes off and you can see receiving call from it's like, no, fuck off, no, not now. No, 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 no. <laughs> like yeah, if this you know, if that was happening in fiction, that'd be like Luke Skywalker approaching the the Death Star run. He's on that thing, and instead of Luke, instead of Obi-Wan giving him that advice and saying, oh, you know, trust your feelings. It'd be him going, are you almost at the point you fire the missile yet, Luke? Because um, you are going to need to fire that. No! <laughs> yeah, it'd be a very different story. Put off at the last <laughs> second. So there's been a call from someone going, has he left yet? Um, so she goes up to check and no, it's just um, just old Imp in there. And he's, and he's hungry. I'm not sure at this point because he's pointing at where is he's pointing at a cupboard that he wants her to go in, and I'm not in the room, and I can tell which cupboard he's pointing to. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. She's looking at every cupboard, but is that. she fucking with him? <laughs> is, your, like, is your dinner in here? Oh no, it's just plastic fruits. Oh, silly, silly, silly. He points at the this one, one in the top left corner. Is it at the bottom left? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> oh, what's this? Oh, a load of poisons and stuff. You don't Bottles want to eat that, do you? <laughs> I just bought these bottles of jizz from the, that he's been collecting for his other experiment. Oh, he's like, oh, um, it's not there, is it? And then, and then he opens it, and I thought, oh, finally, you'll open this last one. That's where his food is. I was, I was mistaken. It's a dead ape. It's <laughs> a dead ape. It's the corpse, <laughs> corpse of voodoo, uh, who's been murdered by who? We never do. Do we ever find out? I mean, are we supposed to just no. assumptions? Um, yeah, we we don't know. But um, having find, found the, the murdered voodoo, <laughs> poor voodoo, rigid. <laughs> Obviously, <laughs> was surprised by the murder. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> voodoo falls out of the cupboard, you know, stiff as a board. Um, yeah. And Jane says, right, um, I've got to find out where the professor is. He's clearly gone because his car's gone as well at this point. He snuck off without saying goodbye. Rude. Um, the last thing he said to her was, fuck off. Fuck off and leave <laughs> me alone. She went in with that food, did she? Yeah. <laughs> can you make Still me a, all over the a bit of food? Yeah, here's your food. Fuck off. <laughs> what? Well, yeah, because the eight, this is when he's chasing <laughs> Impram with a stick. He basically, <laughs> like, putting someone through a table in the wrestling, he dives down and smashes <laughs> through the tray. Don't you? He's like, oh, just leave that, will you? Close the door. <laughs> Get out um, of here. Yeah, so, yeah, Voodoo's been murdered. She goes to town, tells Link to stay with Imp. He doesn't. He fo- I feel this is a tonal change. She's like, oh, it's better to be nice to him, explain to him like children. She walks away from the house and he's following. She fucking whasses a rock at him. Yeah, she does. <laughs> Oi, stop following me, twat. <laughs> Slings a rock at him. And he's like, fucking hell. I like this. This is, this is Link's, like, second outfit. So his, his first outfit is waistcoat shirt jacket all that stuff and he's got a more casual look which is just trousers and a shirt shirt undone a bit yeah so he's following her she lozzes a rock at him just go out the house well yeah um so he does he does not say that again yeah (laughs) (laughs) i don't think i'm going to it's kind of like in his head he's agreeing but he's thinking nasty things about you while he's doing it um (laughs) but this is when this is when chekhov's savage dog turns up Oh, yeah. I mean, it would be horrible to just be approached by a dog on the moors, on the of his moors, and it just barking and coming at you. That would yeah. be scary. <laughs> Literally, the hand of the freaking Baskerv- Baskervilles coming yeah. after her. This was frustrating. And she hasn't got a coat on, and it looks cold. This, yeah. What's yeah. the point in that? She's on still wearing a karate well. kid outfit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but she likes it. Outruns an attack dog, to be fair. Maybe this is how she outruns Link later on because she's the fastest woman in the world. She's pretty speedy. It's got to be. A, you got to admit, it, she's pretty speedy. She um, climbs, climbs up a fence, 
pretty much. When she, well, yeah, she, she, climbs she jumps up the fence and there's a hole right next to it, which yeah, she could have gone there's in. A, yeah, there's yeah. a hole that like, she could have easily got over. That's but three she... inches to the right. I'm probably not going to be able to make that. <laughs> the dog's right. Not very her. good with stuff like that. She doesn't know cupboards, top left, top right. She's like <laughs> perspectives and stuff. She's not, she's not so into it. She starts climbing up and the dog is going to get her. But this is when, as I mentioned at the top there, Link turns up and like suplexes that dog so hard it changes species. <laughs> that reminded me of it reminded me of Big Show and Rey Mysterio oh, when he's God. in a stretcher. <laughs> and oh, he's yeah. whacking him on the side. The stretcher of straight <laughs> straight into the like corner of the <laughs> he Jason Voorhees is that dog really he, like smashes it but without a sleeping bag against the tree. <laughs> it's horrific. That dog is immediately dead and change of species as well yeah and dead as a doberman as a side eye yeah <laughs> that's right i murdered a dog right in front of you but i see like put his hand out like yeah like is he going for a fist bump or is that like the forgiveness thing it's like come on i was a forgive dickhead me. and i followed you but i forgive, forgive you you murdered a sentient being well yeah. done um so what happens now they go back to the house don't they they go back they go back to the they go back to the house after the after that, and then the, the guy who was on the phone turns up and he yeah. goes, Mr. the Professor. Oh, he's not here. Well, give him this check when you come. It's for voodoo. Um, Did you bring... notice who he was, Andy? I don't know I, if you'd know, but it's I... Tosh from the bill. Is it Tosh? Oh, it's geez. Tosh from the bill, yeah. <laughs> That's from the bill. I racked my brain for about a day, and when I was re watching my edit of it, I was oh, like, yeah. it's, it's the lack of the mustache. It's yes. the lack of the mustache. <laughs> No way. <laughs> That's Tosh. insane. That is insane. The anti Tosh. He doesn't have it. Because I. Um, th- yeah. That's. 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 I would have never got that's that. It's a great spot. There's a great spot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to do all. Uh, <laughs> that reminds me. Uh, so the... she's acting. So Jane is acting like, oh, I've sold something on Facebook Marketplace, but. But they all accidentally sent it, sold it to someone else as well, and they've turned out to get it. And you got to like lie. What? No, don't go upstairs. No, it's not here. It's, it's damaged. It's damaged. It's damaged. No, voodoo is fucking dead. Yeah, but, but, but this guy kind of takes it. He just goes, "Oh, dead. Oh, that's a shame. That's all right. I'll take Link instead. I got to put him down." Yeah, so I'll, t- I'll still take him. Maybe we'll get like twenty quid for our eyes or something. <laughs> Um, <laughs> Twenty quid. For, why does he want to take the? Why does he want to take the corpse? He's gonna fucking. Yeah, he's gonna. Yeah. <laughs> he's, yeah, he's gonna do all Gosh. sorts to that to that thing. Does his old? Gonna use the hair to make a mustache out of so <laughs> for acting roles in the bill. Yeah, oh, I've got an audition. You know that mustache yourself? Yeah, yeah, yeah I, do. I do. It looks glued on. It looks like ape. Yeah, what are you on about? It looks like ape hair. Thanks. I mean, what? Because um, all right, I'll still take the old boy. Because I'm um, so I'm gonna kill him. I yeah. said what? And she goes, no, don't, don't kill him. Um, no, you're not. Oh, of course, I've, I've, I've forgotten. This is after he's already been an eight perv, where she goes to take a shower and he's just standing in the doorway. Oh, of course, yeah. <laughs> but so yeah, things are that's... things are frayed between them. But you would think this kind of fixes it up a little bit because she won't let him. He says, "Right, give me that." He loads of tranquil, well, you know, loads of a gun with poison. Is he just going to blow him away in the driveway? <laughs> <laughs> he's going to take him out. He's going, right, stand against the wall, turn around, <laughs> turn give around, a, give him a cigar and a blindfold. Take, just your, stand stand against take the your final puff of the cigar. Look at the flowers. Look, look down at the flowers. <laughs> oh, lovely, aren't they? Bang. Fucking hell. Watch the rabbits in the field. But you shot in the back of the head. Um, yeah. But he doesn't do that because Jane kind of wrestles the man. He gets back into his car because the apes, the apes team up against him. Um, and yeah, he, he says, him lets his tire down, doesn't sword. he? Yeah. Yeah. Him lets his tire down and he's going like, ha, 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 ha. Um, and then he <laughs> like, rips such good faces, that little rips guy. Rips off his um, wipers, windscreen wipers. And then suddenly, out of nowhere, Link gets Andre the Giant strength and decides <laughs> he's going to tip. Flips his van. We didn't flip it all the way. He's just kind of like doing it. And then I think Jane does I could say, if I wanted. I could. But I could if I wanted, but I'm not going to, all right? I've got respect. Don't he rip his shirt off? Is that when he rips his shirt off as well? He's like, it's fucking go time, mate. Take the jacket <laughs> off. I'm going to fucking lift that car off. Yeah. 
If you had some braces, I'd be fucking twanging of your little <laughs> Like the mayor of a town. Yeah. <laughs> like one of the Cray twins. Yeah. He comes out with it. And yeah, he comes out, almost looks the band. But then the guy, the guy chips off, he drives away. Um, and you think that that's uh that that that's kind of it, right? They've they've solved it, but then immediately after, Link tries to drown Imp in the well. He's like sealed him in there, so he gets done, and they've broken broken two rules at once here because Jane basically goes, Link, you absolute prick for putting him down that well. We're going inside and you're staying out there. And he's like, Oh, forgive me. And he's like, No. Yeah, so you you've you've involved themselves, you've involved yourself in their squabbles. And two rules broken, and you've not forgiven him. And then the unwritten fifth rule, you've absolutely cucked him because he clearly fancies you because he's spying you in the shower ready. And then you're leaving him, literally standing outside the window. So when he's spying, making you watch, making you watch do gambles with the other one. Oh yeah. When so when he's when he's spying on her in the shower, she just decides not to have a shower because she's just like, absolutely not. If you're not, it's, gonna it's a, a bath, bath in it. Yeah. It's oh, a yeah. bath because I was distraught about how she just wasted all that water. It's like ah. <laughs> oh. That your boiler, your heating's going to be bad in there anyway because of your draft. <laughs> you've wasted all this hot water. This the, you're going to have to. If you've got a cup of tea tonight, microwave, <laughs> and, it's got, like and it's got half a telephone in there. So good luck with that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's, it's Link at this point stripped to the waist as well. Yeah, so we get to yeah. the waist, isn't he? So Link's there. He's outside, <laughs> and um, Imp also uses the talk, talking box. And and like she's saying, oh, should we let let Link back in while he's outside? Like literally, his face pressed against the glass while you're gambling around on the crash mats with the other monkey. And, and well, he, there's, a, and there's like a storm happening as well. And he's just storm happening outside, like, soaking oh. wet on the window. <laughs> and she's like, should we let Link back in? And then Imp is like, he Fuck types him. a thing saying, "Fuck him, kill him, kill." <laughs> oh him. yeah, he types in that kill Link, but he kill. does like this. He goes, "Kill Link." Stinky bug link kill link for a laugh, could yeah, be a laugh. And he kill goes, him. Don't, he's like, Don't kill him. Well, but then she still doesn't go all the way good though. She goes, Oh, we'll let him in in a bit. Yeah, well, she lets <laughs> she keeps him out there all night, doesn't she? I, I'm not sure actually. I don't remember. I think, when I she think goes the only time to... we see him, the next time we see him is he's in the van. So I think he like sought shelter in the van. Hmm. Yeah. Poor Link. But yeah, you definitely imp has the right idea, <clears throat> unless Imp is the true villain of the piece. We never know. Because <laughs> Soze himself says, kill, kill Link. She says, no, we don't kill people. All right. Um <laughs> that's not how civilized people behave. They don't kill people. And Imp's just like, well, well no, and, that, and that's what it. And then the solution to that is that she reads um she reads Imp the story of the three little pigs. And I wasn't sure this was going to come back as well because as she's reading that little story, we see him getting into the. This is when he diehards it. We see him getting into the work into the house and he's crawling through the vents as we go. And I was like, is he going to come down the chimney? She's going to big bad wolf him. Put a pot of boiling. She's got a hot bath, microwave enough <laughs> of that water and put it in a pot <laughs> on the bottom, boil him up. But no, he comes through the through the floor. <laughs> Yeah, so he's he smashes. He, 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 when he's lying down, he starts doing like a Beatrix kiddo one inch punch from Kill Bill. Yeah, he's <laughs> his way like through, just through, watched his way it. Through the <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Have we already seen that he's done the? We must have, right? Because he's like David's already phoned and said, Are "You all right?" And Link Link's also broken the other telephone wire, and we've now also seen other bits of evidence, right? Because we find the van. Yeah, and well, we've done the bit where the when Link's outside when it's chucking it down. She Elizabeth Shue, whatever her name is, I don't know. She's a <laughs> she brings out the machine yeah. that that's recorded the voice. Yes, Link uh, Imp shows her because he presses the button, which yeah. is conveniently enough has got. So they've been weekend at Bernie's in the Professor basically because they have a tape recorder <laughs> that says, "Go away, will you? I'm busy." No, they're, they're home alone in her. Yeah. They're basically, it's yeah. like, get out of here, you little pervert. I'm going to slap you, silly. <laughs> what are you cooking, Frankie? But yeah, they are. <laughs> <laughs> they've, they've screwed it. So she clearly knows something's awry and now. And then she goes out and she sees the van um, with the, the, the man who came to shoot Link has got. 
She tries to get him to push it to give her a jump start, but it doesn't jump start. And then Link just pushes it over the cliff. And right next to it, she sees another car, which is probably the professor's. Yeah. He just, yeah. Jump starting is not his forte. He's it too like, far like, like, stop pushing, cliff. stop pushing. No! <laughs> so this is, we get a cut now where you can clearly see is a man dressed as an ape pushing the car. Yeah. Which I kind of like. Is it? it didn't take me out of it too much. I was like, that's funny. Yeah, we've uh, we jumped through that a little bit. Basically, at this point, by the time that's happened, this is when she legs it back to the house, outruns him. Um, yeah. And she now decides to take Imp's advice and she gets out the professor's, like, big old gun. And when he's beaten on the door, she blasts right through. Oh, yeah, Jesus. So he's and, beating on the door. She tries and, to, like, block it with a few things. At this point, Imp is just causing a... Shut up, Imp! He's like... <laughs> climbing the shit. Um, what, what were you going to say then, Ben? Sorry. Yeah, so she shoots through the door at Link, doesn't she? Yeah. And I think she just manages to hit him on the sole of his feet. That's just where he gets... <laughs> He's got like a like, blood stain on his but, thing, but he tanks it like a champ. He's like, yeah. I think she's like, like John McClane. Yeah, 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 yeah. She, I think she like wings him, doesn't she? So yeah, so he, and he makes a little footprints away. Absolutely then, tanks that shotgun blast, but he of all the doors he can open, he cannot open that trap door. And right. thankfully, we go down into the cellar. Uh, Imp and Jane, and thankfully for those smugglers' caves, takes you right to the seaside, yeah. miles from the house. So they go, why do they keep like leaving and coming back, leaving and coming back? So this they, is when all the other guys arrive. And they they leave, leave and we get a shot to that, I'm an ape man, and they're having a sing-song like, oh, going, yeah. to the, going to the three thing, like, lads. Lads, lads, because lads. They, they've already rung up, haven't they? Because yeah, there's they a second phone, the phone in the house, yeah. Mm. Um, they spoke on the phone before Link just literally yanked the phone line down. <laughs> um, and they're listening to those things and they're all making fun of him saying, oh, what if we get in there and they're, they're literally doing it? And he's like, no, don't be like that. There was something wrong with the phone. Um, there's something going on. We're going to go that we're going to go and inve- investigate it. Um, they arrive while Jane is at the coast still looking in the car. Um, to see if she can find the professor, which she doesn't. Um, she does, however, find a the other man in a bush. So Link Imp runs up the cliffs. She <laughs> follows him. The other dead man, the other the other man that was going to kill Link, he fall his dead body falls out the bushes, and she fully falls all the way down that cliff. Oh, <laughs> that her, and all she's got is a grazed knee. At the end, she's like, shit. <laughs> She looks like she's what's that cheese rolling thing? I was yeah. just gonna say, yeah, it looks like she's chasing the cheese, yeah. Yeah, because people <laughs> stuff her down. That. <laughs> Horrific. I would love to, I would love to have seen Link drag in a corpse and just sling it into a bush. I'd love to have seen that. But this is the thing, I'm up for another narrative on this one. Imp did know where that body was and has chuffed off. Yeah. I reckon he's in on this. Of course, definitely, hundred yeah, percent. He yeah. is, he is kind of Soze because he's got violent tendencies as well, and it, I think he's just like I reckon he he like urges Link to do the things he does. He's the master manipulator. Pets him up. He's the puppet Link, master. I heard that they were saying this about you, and he's like, "You fucking what?" <laughs> they were saying what they they said. You can't smoke a cigar properly. Oh, fucking show them. Bastard. They reckon it takes you two, three goes to even light a match. Nah. Master of fire, mate. Nah. King of the swingers. You're ranked at no chimp. <laughs> um yeah, um so she finds that she finds the dead body, falls all the way down the cliff. Um meanwhile, the guys have arrived at the house. Um oh. great work in getting the Scottish friend to be the one that announces in his best like tag at voice. There's been a mudder. There's been a murder. That guy I recognise. He's been. He's like a character actor. He's been loads of stuff. Yeah, the Peter on IMDb. He's one of the one, uh, of the main, one of your main guys. I think he's in Luther as well as like a some police guy, some police guy. But yeah, so he discovers the body of 
he just got he was he well, does he oh he yes does. he does is yeah. he the one that just did just turns up and goes oh it's a pool of blood there i put my finger in it <laughs> yeah that's is that, that is one that guy is, it, yeah, is, okay, yeah, guy. Oh, is that the next is that the next guy because the first the guy says there's been a murder goes i'm literally waiting outside i'm not yeah, yeah. and then he looks down, a bad feeling he looks about down this. the well and he's like i can't really see down this well what will it a single match will be yeah. just what i need <laughs> so he lights a match and holds it down I need to buy this brand of matches because he <laughs> drops that match all the way down the well <laughs> It stays on and it lands on an ape's cage and who should be down the bottom of the well but the professor. Professor written out too early. <laughs> professor, professor written out. <laughs> professor his, written out. His, his dead He's body dead. is down down the well in the cage, stashed away. Maybe when Link was locked, maybe when Imp was locked down there, he was hiding that body. I yeah. reckon. She, she's this. been there all the time. So how did they manage to do that while, while also- she was there? Maybe where he was the hell hiding is it Link? when Link was making her feel uncomfortable in the bath. Possibly. Oh, Where's yeah. where Link in this scenario? Because he definitely opens the well all the way, looks down, and some Link is somewhere, grabs him by the air, yeah, pulls he, him in. He slurps <laughs> him off down the well, that. doesn't he? I reckon he gets in. Maybe he was going to let him go, but then he lit that Hiding match on his first go. He was Hiding like, in the shadow won. like that. Right. <laughs> there can be only one. And he basically, <laughs> the guy turns into any rag dolls down that well. <laughs> he is ragdolled oh. instantly and he just like <laughs> he tumbles <laughs> down the well he looks like Richard like... Kimball when he jumps off the <laughs> the thing in The Fugitive and you just see that oh, God, yes. <laughs> I didn't kill my wife I don't care <laughs> just literally <laughs> amazing so why are you a policeman then why, if you don't care don't bother following me bye <laughs> bye bye um, see you later but yeah he does definitely he, rag, he ragdolls off definitely dead um so that's that's that one gone, and the other one takes a bit of a he takes a bit of a note from the film watching community because much like this film, the second friend gets absolutely letterboxed. <laughs> yeah, the, it this is the guy, look, this is the guy that's looking at the floor. Little ape hand comes through. He's like, "What's that in the, in the letterbox there?" God, and then an ape hand comes through. It literally drags him what into the be, letterbox, yeah. and it just smashes into it i think this might be where one of the other cuts happened you know because in a in an interview with the director when he's talking about things being taken out of the film one of the things he says about the differences in the movie is that an ape literally pulls someone through a letterbox i don't think he would have said that if it said (laughs) an ape pulls someone's arm through the letterbox bashing them against the door and killing them which is what appears to happen and the guy does appear to become a puppet, which I don't think you would need to do <laughs> to do that. I think there's an original cut of this movie where the guy gets properly pulled through the letterbox. All the way, what, like, like Nightmare on Elm Street style? Yeah, and then it comes out like Constantine at the other side, or like a Tom <laughs> and Jerry where he's become letterbox shape. Yeah. Get a good oh, kill streak going, pretty on. Pretty sweet, that. that. Yeah. So he letterboxed him, and then the boyfriend, David... Just gets thumped off screen, I guess, because he's looking at out the window <laughs> and we see Link coming up behind him. But the next time we see him, David is underneath the floorboards. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what I thought. I thought that when I was editing my video, I thought I must have like missed a bit out because I couldn't figure out how he just ended up underneath the floorboards. I'm like, what, what the fuck's going on? <laughs> Why didn't Link kill him? Why did he just like say, right, under the floorboards for you, mate? Passed out, woke up underneath the floor, just humiliate him for him. That's all. Yeah, comes out underneath the floorboards. Um, Jane comes back to the house, sees her boyfriend's cars outside, and then Link is there like Hannibal. He's sat at the table, going, put that knife down, because she's got a carving knife, and she goes, all right. I she could have got the that. gun, couldn't she? The, the gun was still there somewhere. Yeah. She could have gone, I'll get the, that gun, the, the gun or this the, knife. The gun looked bent when the three guys found it. Like Link had just picked it up and gone. Oh, was he it. twisted it like a balloon animal? Oh right, I yeah. didn't know if that was the Tosh's gun. Because he's super oh, Tosh's strong. gun that he broke earlier. Maybe he uh, just yeah. took it out though, because he's Possibly, not. yeah, good point. He'll take things out. He, he cooked that phone. Don't forget. Yeah, yeah could have got it in the microwave. Yeah. Yeah. Nice brew. Yeah. So he's he's bust that up. Um, but yeah. Jane comes in, he's sat at the table trying to be all cool about it. He might as well be swilling a, a cognac. And he's like, oh, 
come and sit down, why don't you? And then he grabs her, grabs her a little bit too hard. Um, he's thought about getting her to put the knife down, but he's not thought about getting sucker punched and being knocked on his ass. So that's what happens. <laughs> he takes a good slap. Literally, yeah, he gives him a big open hand across the face. Have it. Um, sends him sends him tumbling. And then we have a bit where they basically run around the house. And you know what? Say what you will about the acting of this movie. It really does capture the frantic feeling of <laughs> running around through a house being pursued by an insane ape. Yeah. <laughs> Every door you open, he's already there. Fuck. How he climbs up, he goes through the windows, he smashes things and gets in and out of all the rooms because unfortunately 90% of the rooms in this house have a skylight. <laughs> Is this after he's, he's he's made a splint, hasn't he? Or is that yeah. before that bit? Yeah, they find this, they find David. He announces to us that Link has broken his leg. That must be another one of the cut scenes that was cut out of the movie because in oh, a yeah. scene, apparently entirely off camera, Link has knocked the boyfriend out, broken his leg, and hidden him under the floorboards. <laughs> yeah. But for no reason, because he just gets out the floorboards, doesn't he? You don't, yeah, you don't just, see that he's just he wakes up and like goes. <laughs> Where the fuck am I? Gets out. Yeah, so they're making a splint out of like those school rulers that you get. <laughs> like the big meter rulers. <laughs> Drawing a line on the blackboard. Um they so they draw they make him one. Link comes in through the room, they lock him, they basically shut shut another door he can't get through, but he comes up, they run screaming from the ape, but then they get down into the they get down into the basement. And Elizabeth Shoe, like they're about to run down the corridor. And he's going, no, 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 he'll just, he'll just outrun us. Well, not me, like I'm established as being the fastest, but you, my <laughs> friend with your broken leg, David, he'll, he'll outrun you. So, um, I'm, 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 I'm going to have to out. We're going to have to outsmart him. Um, and what she does is to do it, wax the old gas back on, Chekhov's gas main under there, and then says. Like shouts up, oh fucking hell, Link! <laughs> oh my god, she stitches him right up, doesn't she? <laughs> Monkeys can't smoke cigars, especially if they're pricks like you. Um, <laughs> Proper reverse psychology. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, you can't you can't cook shit. It's a good job the professor's got that microwave because you probably can't use the oven. Monkeys uh, and apes can't cook. They can't smoke cigars. They can basically do nothing that's related to lighting matches. And you yeah. stink. And you got a tiny dick. Right, <laughs> like a dyed orangutan. <laughs> <laughs> Them ears look fake. <laughs> Amazing. And he goes, right, I'm going to show her. I'm going to light this match on the 19th attempt. Yeah, what, uh, which what, is good because that's plenty of time for gas to fill the entire house. Yeah. And it um, gives him ample time to hide behind those three cardboard boxes as well, which is... Just all you need to save yourself <laughs> from a gas explosion. Yeah. Just a couple yeah. of boxes. Thankfully, explosions mostly travel upwards. That's you know, <laughs> mostly that's that's really good that they've got that cave because, as you see, it draws loads of wind up. I don't know if that is a thing that happens. So the draft coming that way blows must, the explosion must, away. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so basically, after being totally mugged off, Link gets absolutely punked and is tricked into blowing himself up. But he doesn't get him, it's just the gas main. Yeah. The gas main explodes. Obviously, the house is on fire now. Down. He, and he just singes his eyebrows a little bit. That seems to be all that happens. Yeah. So Link, in a very long and protracted way, as the others head through the cave, the smuggler's cove to like the back to the beach, um, Link climbs up into the house, swings across the, you know, he goes up the banister, he takes his shirt off fully, he takes what's left of his clothes off to become full ape mode, swings across a chandelier, goes up to like the top of the Adams family house that they live in. Yeah. Like stands at the top of it and like goes, no! <laughs> Just before the, the roof basically caves in and he falls to oblivion. He falls, it's like, it's like he's a little cut out of him falling. <laughs> into the, yeah. It's like his Ripley moment, isn't it, from Alien 3. It's the Die Hard moment, actually. It's very, yeah, um, yeah it's very... Um, Amazing special it's effects. Hands really <laughs> falling in to the, the fiery pit below. Fantastic special effects. And then, um, as what what 
vehicle do they get in? Is it just, oh, it's just their car. It's just a car, it's isn't it? Yellow. Yeah, because it's, yellow cool, it's oh, a cool no. boyfriend car. Because there was a bit earlier on when she was in that car doing a 57 point turn yeah, or something yeah, like that. Yeah. In a tiny oh, yeah. courtyard. That's actually, don't know what was that's, going actually, on. that's actually temporarily defeats him, isn't it? Because she uses the car to reverse at him and he yeah. breaks the windscreen and then she. Smashes down his climbing frame. Yeah, smashes down his climbing frame. Don't yeah, just hit him with the car. I've I think never... that's that's one of the things. I wouldn't want to fight an ape. I wouldn't want to hurt one. But if I was forced to fight one, having a car would be a great thing. Yeah, but in fighting him in a tiny courtyard, doing an eighty-seven point turn is a bit humiliating for everyone involved. I think. Don't drive off and get help as well. Don't go get any assistance. Just no. just use fuel. Well done. Yeah. Well Use fuel and damage the car by smashing down an entire jungle gym. Um, yeah, but she's not insured as well. Oh, that's disgusting. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe she's a name driver. They're, <laughs> well, they're not. They're not that, apparently, <laughs> according to Jane, they're not that serious of an I item. I don't reckon she is a name driver now. Not at all. She hasn't added it to the insurance. She hasn't got that serious yet. So as they're driving away at the at the end, they find Imp, who obviously made himself scarce during all the carnage. Um, and he just sat on a little wall and they go, oh, there he is. He was just down here hiding from all the commotion. If I'm David, I don't want any apes in the car. No, well, he, he is like that. She's like, oh, get in the back with him. And he's like, fuck no. I don't <laughs> want like... an ape anywhere near me. Uh, yeah, ah, he won't break your one. leg. He won't break your leg. He's lovely. He's just a he's just a baby. He wouldn't hurt anyone. And I was, I had to rewind and see. I only caught it at the very last second as I watched the first one. I was like, are we just going to hear David like going, ah, in the last <laughs> yeah. they drew, <laughs> Oh, my balls, nose and eyes and ears. He's getting them. He's getting um, them all. Um, but we don't hear that. Um, what we hear is nothing. But then you notice that the whole, he goes, oh, imp wouldn't hurt anyone. But then as we see, as they drive away, all the sheep in the, that field have been choked out. <laughs> All he's dead. been busy, hasn't he? It's, 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 it's like he's, busy. he's done right. Now no, now no one's concentrating on me. I'm going to go and do what I've always wanted to do to these sheep. Fuck them up. <laughs> with, all the sheep stood, with all the sheep stood there and things like that. Farmers as well, notoriously. Be, you know, in anywhere where there's predators, especially a, a field where the savage dogs running around. I suppose you wouldn't and expect. they say, like, oh, if anyone sees them, then sheep getting attacked they they're within their rights to shoot them you wouldn't expect it to be a chimpanzee would you so it is probably i mean you'd keep your eye on your sheep to see if anything was choking them possibly yeah but uh that is it that's the end of the movie have what we got time? any name game andy i've got some ready for you guys oh, there we go and then luke's absence always always it's a little bit sad. <laughs> it's, it's it's a little bit simpler because of course it's a one word <laughs> a very short one word thing that's so my got... i think that's my favorite kind of name game right, i've got a couple for you so you'll rattle through these i'm sure you'll get them so oh, a young a young zoology student um is takes on a role as a professor's assistant in the world but um finds herself assaulted by the insane hero of time by the what the insane hero of time. Yeah, the insane hero of time and legendary protector of Hyrule. Oh, Link. Oh, Link. Link, correct. Yeah, yeah. Just Link. Um, a young zoology student takes a job as a professor's assistant, but um, finds herself assaulted by um, a, I would say, mid to late 90s emergent pop star obsessed with a secondary colour. Pink. Pink, correct. Pink. Oh, yeah, that's, good. that's good. I'm just, I was never near that. Um, Obsessed with a secondary colour. Uh, a young zoology student takes a job assisting a professor, but due to a pervy ape, um, is unable to bathe for the entire six week period. <laughs> Stink. Stink, correct. Stink. Stinky bastard. Um, a young zoology student takes a job assisting a professor. Um, but in a in a secret forbidden underground basement finds a large recreational ice area with deadly results. Rink. Rink, correct. <laughs> um, a young zoology student takes a what? job assisting a professor, only to find out he's in some pretty pervy cum, cum collecting stuff. Kink. Kink, correct. 
Um, and that's, that's spunk. Sorry. <laughs> a young zoology student assists a uh, takes a job <laughs> assisting a an eccentric professor. Um, fortunately for her, um, given the experience that a similar colleague had dealing with apes, um, this professor focuses his studies on kind of a sort of stoat. Skink. Not skink. It's a lizard. Stoat. Skink. Skink's a lizard, isn't it? Yeah. Um, a stoat. Uh, oh, or God. polecat type creature. God, I can only think of... Uh, I can't think. Making expensive it? coats out of them? Mink. 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 <laughs> I was going to say mole rat. <laughs> <laughs> and finally... A young zoology student takes a job assisting a, a local excessive professor. Unfortunately, um, he has no animals and in many ways his alcoholism is the real problem. Drink. Drink, Drink correct. Drink. <laughs> I don't know if there's any more words, is there? No, there's no more. Like, oh, I've got a couple to rattle through. <laughs> rattle through. You've got them all. Yeah, all the All the rhymes. <laughs> Very good. I'm sure, as Luke would say, you got them all correct. 10 out of 10. Fun. That was fun. Uh, okay, so now what we have to do is rate the movie from A to F. So, Ben, would you like to go first? Oh, my life. Uh, <laughs> oh. I, don't, <laughs> I don't know, because I'd normally rate my movies out of 10. Hmm. So... Have you given this movie I've... an out of 10 rating? Yeah, I've given this a movie out of 10. Going on a uh, five being an average film, like a proper yep. rating, not like five, like mediocre. So five is an average film, 10's outstanding, and one's crap. Uh, I think <laughs> when, I, when I first watched it, I, I gave this a three. <laughs> oh, wow. But the more I've watched it, um, I've, I've, appreciated, I've appreciated it a lot more, I think, and it's more fun than I expected it to be. So I'd, I'd give it a five. I'd give it like an average, an average film. There's I'd nothing... say a five was like a, what would you say? Probably a C. Like a C? A C? A C? Yeah. yeah, I'd say a C. I think I'd probably go with you on a C, just because I don't know how much of like the horror elements really do work. It's kind of like a monkey thriller. It's a bit silly, uh, a bit over the top. Doesn't doesn't take itself too seriously. Uh good central performance but i think it suffers as soon as terence stamp is out of the picture it does suffer um yeah and it's, and it's a weird film you're like you're like where is it set when's it set it's just an odd odd film uh but the monkey actors are great you know well done to the monkey actors and i like that it's got this kind of other plot under the surface which is like is imp really the evil ape which uh which is interesting you know? it's a nice, I think nice way is. to Nice way for the film to end, and we never ever got that imp sequel. Gutted. Apparently, the director wanted to do one. Oh right, okay. He wanted to. I do think it'd be interesting to be set in a very different. I mean, he wanted to do one like actually set in Africa and so on, where okay they're on the home all ground. The, all the other animals are wearing suits as well. Uh, I so think yeah, it would think... be interesting seeing like a, a director's cut, like if there is like the letterbox bit. Yeah, in definitely. It and find out what happens to old Davy Boy. I think <laughs> old Davy Boy. Yeah. <laughs> Um, like but yeah, I think I'll go for a, a C as well. I'll join you on that, Ben. Okay. Um, <laughs> again, it's, it's, it, you know, it's tough because we've been here before. Like, I genuinely like some what I know objectively are awful movies. Um, this is a first watch for me, so I don't have necessarily the, the nostalgia that goes with it, but there were some good things, and you're right. Bad apes are horrid. Those bad gorillas. Yeah. Do I enjoy this as much as Congo that I do have lots of nostalgia for or Monkey Shines that has some hilarious ape-faced revenge in it? Maybe it's not. Oddly enough, I reckon that monkey in Monkey Shines, actually a monkey, not an ape, um, better <laughs> at matches than, than Link. She yeah. plants that house now with all those people Way having an affair in it. 100%, Dead good at yeah. matches. Uh, didn't claim to be a master of fire. I still had some fun with this. I think it was some fun ape horror to round off our trilogy. Um, 
you know what, fuck it, I'll join you, I'll, I'll join you on a C. I probably, I think like <laughs> then, I, I think I, I, I gave this a two and a half stars on, on Letterbox and that. So in reality, I'm probably closer to a C minus, but talking about it, I've had a lovely time. So I'll yeah. up it to a C and having discussed it with you guys, I'm more likely to watch it again just for, for, for laughs. Maybe I, should have bought value, it. Yeah. Maybe I should have bought it on Amazon instead of just renting it. I, think I thought the same thing. I thought exactly the same thing. I wish I'd have bought it. <laughs> I think out of the other quid. monkey film, this is this is probably the weakest out of the other ones because I think quite like Monkey Shines and Congo is obviously in its own yeah realm of awesome. I mean, look at I mean, look at the the star power of Congo. Ernie Hudson. You've got um, Tim, Curry. Tim Curry, Bruce, Bruce Campbell. Campbell, Bruce Campbell, Campbell, all the all the all the big players. There we go then. That is that. What is your ranking? Well, I, I don't know. What's You've got... the ranking of the trilogy? <laughs> ranking of the trilogy. Ranking of the trilogy. Throwing it out there. How are you going to? I mean, them? you know, I feel about Congo. So if we're calling it a horror, let's say Congo's at far and away number one. Monkey Shines number two. Link quite far at the back, <laughs> running along <laughs> at the back slowly. Sort of cigars. Yeah. You guys, you guys agree with that? Is that your rating as well? Place three. Have you seen I would do. Uh, yeah, I have. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, I would do for horror. I'd stick with the same, but I think I've got um, more of a tie to this film because I've watched yeah. it so much that I'd probably knock this up a bit. But... Yeah, yeah. No, I won't disrespect this movie. I think no. if it was if it was horror movies, <laughs> I think horror. I might go slightly <laughs> off. It. But for horror movies, I might go Monkey Shines. Okay. Then Congo. I was and, trying to be respectful then, of Congo, and, considering the company. And then this, but yeah. <laughs> in, term, in terms of film, in terms of films, I would I would watch. Like if I was um, if I was going to um, a desert island to to go and have to, you say you can only take one eight based horror. I would take Congo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I enjoy all three of these. What a lovely. What a lovely trilogy of eight. What a lovely horrors. trilogy, yeah. Well, thanks very much, uh, Ben. Where can we? Where can our listeners find more of your stuff? Where can we find your yeah. channel? It's on YouTube. Um, I'm on YouTube. So if you just search for Needle Rats, um, all one ben word, or isn't it? More, yeah, all one word. Yeah, I only called that because I couldn't remember the name of the crack fox from. Uh, <laughs> oh, no, from my bush. <laughs> it's not yeah, bloody me, needle me, rat, my, it? me and my wife were on about it. And she's like, "What's that thing called?" I'm like, "It's a needle rat or something like that." She's like, "That'll do." <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> and what so, have you yeah. got? What's some of the latest stuff we've got? I know you do like reaction videos, reviews. What have we yeah, got so right now to check out? It's basically just reaction videos. I've just started doing um, Demon Slayer because I don't really do much anime, but. Um, my daughter likes that so I've just done the first episode of that I've done Countdown as well which is on um, Netflix have you guys seen I that? I watched Countdown a few months ago yeah. oh dear yeah that's Carol on Carol Vorderman is scary <laughs> I can never do um, the numbers round it's so fucking I like, just can't and obviously you're going to be doing a link, to do a link episode as well that's right yeah the it? link episode is done and I'll, I'll post it up when you guys post this up so it'll be up now whatever so if you to listen this. to this oh. search for needle rats on youtube and you'll find his reaction video as well uh awesome amazing Excellent. thank you so next week looks like we're going to be doing burning bright i think we're just gonna put some other movies in place for the february lineup i don't think we've decided on that yeah, yet we've got Burn- some more picks i know luke has some suggestions to throw in we might see if there's anything related to some of the fright fest movies to see if we can yep. find up uh, prequels <clears throat> or sequels or a burning bright another yes. animal horror next yeah. week now you've said it ben i kind of want us to find a, a lion and a bear movie we can do then you can have a lions tigers and bears oh my trilogy there's the killer bear movie with alec baldwin and Anthony hopkins don't think that's really a horror there it's more like a thriller and Lion, what's that movie where like all the real like the family living with lions and it was raw? Filmed? Yeah, one of, most, one of the most dangerous films <laughs> ever made. Because like, ever, there we go, we've got it. We know exactly what. Yeah, Drew Barrymore doing. got like a hair eaten by a lion or something like that. Oh Jesus! What a single <laughs> a single hair off her head? Loads of it. Oh right, <laughs> just a single singular hair. Great. So slurped it off like a spaghetti. <laughs> <laughs> Delicious. <laughs> there we go then. So. Thank you very much for listening this week. If you enjoyed the show, you can become a patron just like Ben Scaife over at patreon.com forward slash 
horror hangout. So thank you very much to our patrons. We've got 10 of them now, which is lovely. Uh, ben, of course, our number one patron at the moment. And then we've got John Crinan. Thanks to Stephen Christopher, Laura Kendrick, Toby Miller, Scott Rigby, Lane Spencer, Ollie Child, Wendy Muller, and Pazuzu. The list is getting longer every week, which is lovely. Yeah. Uh, so thank, thank you, you very guys. Much. It means a lot. And uh, we're working on some more bonus content. I've been ready for this. And we'll say it out loud to conjure it into existence. I've installed the Alan Wake remake so I can refresh myself on the story. Yeah. And we'll uh, so, get some Gem on from- that. Gem from the My Turn podcast who, who guested on the show talking about Doom last year, maybe like mid last year, I think. She's going to join us for a bonus episode discussing Alan Wake slash Alan Wake remastered. I think we're going to kind of come at it from two angles on that. So that should be good for some bonus content. So there we go. So thanks also to Kovach Kamen for our theme music. Thanks to ACAST for hosting the show. Please consider giving us a rating or review on any podcast platform you listen to this show on and head over to the Facebook group, Horror Hangout Board of Advisors and join it there. Thanks to Andy and Ben for being right. Horror dudes. Thanks, Ben. Ben, Cheers. Both Bens. Yeah. Uh, Join join us again sometime, Ben. It's been fun. Yeah, I'd love to, yeah. Yeah. Cheers, guys. Thank you. See you for Shackma. (laughs) See you for Shackma. (laughs) Don't have to be monkey horror, but it should be, right? (laughs) See you later, guys. See you later, guys. Bye for now. Cheers. Bye.